this, the textures are all wrong, but that's the goal text from when you beat a level. Uh, so we're going to, unfortunately, there's not really anywhere to go from here except for spectacularly crashing the game. So there we go. <laughs> that's, that's run number one. <laughs> All right, if there's time, I can do one more, but I don't know if there's time. One. Is it okay? Yes. <laughs> See, I know, we're, I know we're pretty far behind. <laughs> All right, so I've been secretly hyped for this for months now. Yeah, this one, is, this one is officially called Trihex Percent. Trihex Percent speed run, and I don't know what it is. I don't know what's nope. going to happen. Oh, sorry, I'm going fast. <laughs> oh, I missed. All these shortcuts, all this speed, all this standing. <laughs> so there have been a lot of glitches that have been discovered in this game. Uh, and especially just the last year, so huge shout outs to the Tassers and especially to Arn the Great and Nathan Neal and all those guys who figured out most of this crazy, crazy stuff you're about to see. Um, this glitch is, it, it involves getting a glitch sprite in Yoshi's egg inventory. Um, so there's a certain unique enemy on this level that carries around uh, eggs on top of it. It's a rat. And uh, since they carry, since the sprite is these guys right here, since the sprite is kind of tied to the rat itself, um, whenever anything happens to the rat, it, it takes a little. The game also kind of assumes the same thing happened to the egg it was carrying, at least until it touches the ground. So you'll see. Oh, okay, so you'll see in just a moment here what that entails. But basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal an egg from one of those rats and then despawn the rat that was carrying the egg. That causes the egg that is now in Yoshi's inventory to also despawn. Um, and, that, and that empties up a sprite slot in the game's memory that can be used by another sprite. So hold on, I need to concentrate for just a second. I have to do everything here in a very specific order for it to work. That's the egg that I got. Gotta eat this guy. And now... The setup. Okay, if you notice, there's a gap in Yoshi's eggs. There's just a little gap missing. So what happened was I despawned that egg, and I'm going to fill it with a different sprite. Uh, the question is, is which sprite did I choose to fill it with? So that is why this is called Trihex Percent. I'm speechless. I don't know what to expect at all. Here's a hint. <laughs> Watermelon? No, 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 not the watermelon, <laughs> silly. I stole something else. <laughs> Every notice this used to be a big shy guy, now it's not. It's a piece. It's a piece of a sprite. Can anyone recognize? Oh, there, see that flower up there? They're they're all pieces of a certain sprite. Can anyone guess what sprite it is? These. <laughs> I, I literally have currently in my inventory the bonus challenge sprite. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is bonus challenges. Oh bonus challenge. This is so nightmare. Bonus right challenge. <laughs> bonus challenge. Every level, every room, and most of the sprites, all bonus challenge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I have one more thing. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> there's one thing in Yoshi's Island. You know, Yoshi likes to eat stuff. He likes to see what they taste like. He likes to, one of the levels is even called What Does Gusty Taste Like? Well, there's one thing since arriving on Yoshi's Island that Yoshi has never been able to figure out what it tastes like. 
So we're going to get a taste of the forbidden, forbidden substance. Not the wall, not the wall. <laughs> that's good too, but that's not what it is. What? What? That is not what's supposed to happen. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Go car. Remember I sold you the car could wall jump? Hey, I need that baby. Get over here. All right, there we go. All right, so now we have a disembodied baby. Wait, the game is totally fucked. Or, sorry. <laughs> I can't. This has not happened before. I can't. Wait, the screen's like. I can't scroll the screen. I can't scroll the screen. What? That has never happened before. Okay, discovering new glitches live. Well, we can still complete our mission, though. We can still complete our mission. We can still see what the baby tastes like. So I have now I now have baby Mario in Yoshi's mouth. And see you later. We're free! We're free! Alright, I was gonna crash the game too, but I can't get over to the help box to crash the game. But you can, you, you can also eat the uh, the bonus challenge sprite and throw that around too and juggle it. I was gonna do that, but I don't know what happened instead. So hope everybody had fun. Nothing's wrong with it, I just need to use it. You'll see in a second. Pretty much less than five thousand. Am I good, Mom? Yeah. Testing, testing. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, we have a couple things we just want to show off on the stream that uh, people made for us during the fire alarm here. See if I can uh, see if I can get this correctly correctly set up here. There we go. Enjoy, guys. So that's one of them. Just a quick announcement, guys. Uh, we are at over 90,000 viewers. the music on this isn't too loud, so I apologize in advance if it is. Oh, the, why is the window capture not working? Why is the, what the heck? Okay, here we go. Sorry guys. It works for the headphones? Should I just uh, uh I can't. I can't hear anything. Um. Yeah, I can. I can hear myself now. Thank you.
this is nice. Sorry, there's a pile there. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, hello. Pass. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Are you set? Oh, Are you ready? <laughs> oh really? Okay. Uh, so can I sit on the couch? Sure, totally. Okay, so three, two, one. Feel uh, <laughs> free to talk whatever you want. Yeah. Um, well, this is Katamari Damacy, a game which uh, shouldn't need an introduction, I hope. Uh, the runner here is uh, Grass. We just learned how to play there. Uh, basically, you roll stuff up and uh, get bigger and roll up uh, bigger stuff to get even bigger. And that's about the gist of it. Um, but as a speed run, it's uh, very challenging to get optimized. The uh, movement and the geometry is very uh, rough around the edges. So uh, he's going to be doing a lot of turning back and forth to keep the speed up. Because if you just hold forward, you don't go forward very fast. Uh, and when you boost, you lose your speed very fast if you just hold forward. So you got to keep turning. Keep turning to keep your speed up. I just want to say I look really weird while I play this game. I'm sorry. <laughs> And uh, yeah, as, as we're seeing here, uh, when you pick up stuff that's shaped weird, uh, you become shaped weird, and then you, uh, your movement becomes very weird. And that can be a huge pain if you don't uh, set up your shape right. And there's, there'll be a few points where uh, he tries to get a certain shape or uses it to his advantage. Or... This game is really fun. <laughs> So there's nine stars and moon, and then one kind of silly level in the middle that takes like two seconds. <laughs> Which we'll talk about, I guess. It is the best one. Yeah. That was really good. Yeah, that, that boost right there through all the caramels is extremely hard to line up, right? And uh, in addition to you know keeping your movement speed up, you also have the challenge of picking all the stuff up. Um, which, and combining the two is a lot, a lot harder than it looks. Um, if, if you miss like too many things, uh, you won't be big enough to pick up the next thing you need to get to. Whoops, you didn't do it. And a lot of times, uh, you, you know, it'll really slow you down if you have to turn around and go back or something. Uh, you do have the ability to flip 180 degrees by uh, pressing both the control sticks down at the same time. That was a pretty good too. But uh, because your momentum is so important, it's very hard to change direction. I wouldn't reset on a 43, so that's fine. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, the story uh, that we're not getting through the cutscenes is uh, there's this family who's uh, going to visit their father, who's an astronaut. Um, he's going on a, a spaceship to the moon, but uh, the moon is gone because uh, the king of all cosmos, Whoa. who is your father, you're the prince, the little green guy there, he got really drunk one night and uh, accidentally destroyed all the stars. So it's your job uh, to clean up after him and fill up the cosmos again. And you do this by rolling up the Katamari, rolling up stuff with the Katamari. It's really hard to play when the thing is popping like that because it kind of takes up the whole <laughs> middle of the screen. And then like little ledges like that can you bonk into them randomly, sometimes you just roll over them. It's really kind of hard to uh, figure out why you bonk sometimes and why you don't. It has to do with your shape and your speed and your angle and all that stuff. And uh, if you look in the corner now, you see he's uh, huffing, which means that he boosted too much and he can't boost anymore. Three is really the only level where that happens with any regular yeah. It happens to me in 5 a lot, too. I wouldn't reset on a 105 either, but, uh, so... This is pretty good so far. If it happens at the wrong time, you run out of energy at the wrong time, it can be really devastating. So there's not a lot of glitches or sequence breaks or stuff like that. It's just all in uh, the execution of the run. We have a $135 donation from Gooby. Hi everyone, great job with the marathon so far. Wanted to say hi to the W3 crew and especially Nick. Good luck with your run. I love you. I'd like to put in a suggestion to make the link to the past file name Jerks. Love Gooby. Coming up here is a boost off the table that can sometimes go horribly wrong. This is kind of risky, yeah. Shouldn't. <laughs> Sometimes if you uh, try and charge the boost too hard, you do that by uh, going up and down alternating on the control sticks. And uh, sometimes you accidentally flip while you're doing it. really more obnoxious than anything else. I'm kind of small right now, but um, it doesn't matter. I can catch up. Sometimes get stuck at the very end there, in between that uh, pillar he went through. Split. I did need to. He's a, he's a millimeter too small right here, so yeah. he's got to go up and get that. He's much better 18, 18 centimeters even. Yeah. Ideally, you get to those crabs sooner and they're a little closer. A 
lot of stuff can really snowball because there's cycles of stuff that, you know, run around the level. I'm getting pretty owned right now. There's the hop, so, okay. When you're hopping, you can kind of snake like this to kind of stay above the normal max speed that you have when you're hopping. Yeah. The normal max speed is like really, really low. Yeah, when you're tired, you slow down as well. I think I, well, whatever. Children kind of walk around randomly, and sometimes they just block you from doing that boost across the water. Yeah, there, there isn't a whole lot of RNG in this game. Um, like all the items, there's a few items that change, uh, but for the most part, everything stays in the same place and is the same thing from uh, playthrough to playthrough. But there are uh, there are stuff there is stuff that paths around randomly, which can be really obnoxious because you don't know where to expect it. We have a $200 donation from Larry Hastings. Hi guys, had to donate during Katamari Damacy. Now let's see Grass get that holy cow. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I don't remember. It took me like three or four hours the first time I tried. You prob guys probably don't want to see that. Yeah, yeah the speed run doesn't uh, go into the cow level, unfortunately. This is my least favorite level. Yeah. Ooh, that was really nice though. The French Restream is currently down at the moment. So the new link, if you want to get the French Restream for ADBQ, is adbq 2014mrmvcom Another weird thing that happens is when you do the boost, uh, depending on like if you're on a slope or if you're moving sometimes, it won't uh, give you the speed you, not, you want. So really everything he's doing is, is very uh, precise um, in that he's trying to avoid, uh, you know, kind of getting screwed over by random uh, bits of geometry in the level. <laughs> so there's two types of levels in this game. Uh, there's the, the stars and the constellations. Uh, this, except for this coming up level, uh, we only do stars in the run, uh, because that's all you need to get to the ending. But uh, in order to unlock the seventh level, you have to do uh, Ursa Major, which is the bear level. Any constellation works, but this one just happens to be the fastest because you can just end it like immediately. So don't don't blink up here. All you have to do is pick up one bear. Bear, <laughs> and that's the whole level. Uh, so the, cons the constellations all have a, a specific goal. Uh, some of them you have to roll up a certain type of object. Uh, that one in the cow level, you have to roll up the biggest uh, bear or cow uh, you can. And as soon as you get the first one, it's over. So it can be really uh, frustrating to try and play the level normally. Because you pick up some random thing you didn't see because it's much smaller than you and you have to start over again. 
This is probably my least favorite part of the run right here. Yeah, the beginning of this part is you have to keep your speed and you can't miss objects. You need a lot of bananas. Uh, uh, okay, that was really good, I guess. Yeah, you gotta get you gotta get to 65 by those pineapples. And if you're too slow, you'll bonk into the cow that was running around there at the beginning. And this boost over the hill, sometimes that happens. Okay. But it's not a huge loss. Oh, I'm gonna get smashed. Oh, never mind. I'm like a There's this here. swan boat that is just a huge, Where am I? huge jerk. He ruins lives more than anything else in this game. He just runs around this block over and over again. This whole level is pretty much determined by like where you end up in the spawn boat cycle um, from the banana part. King. Great to see Katamari at the marathon with an excellent runner in dress. A little bit too small. No, never mind. That was a pretty good seven. I kind of got screwed at the beginning, but I came back. I would be thrilled with that time. <laughs> Rip. Okay, so that's the first seven levels is like half the run, and then the last three are the other half. Yeah, now the levels get a lot longer. And we get a lot bigger. Sometimes if you flip immediately after you boost, it will send you boosting in the other direction. Uh, it's only started happening like recently. I don't know what I'm doing differently with my boosting. I think I'm holding the controller too tightly or something. This is really hard for, for me for some reason. I try to go too fast and then I end up hitting the wall and feeling really dumb. I probably could have boosted there, but um, I don't know. I wasn't feeling it. Full box? Nice. Okay. Oh, I'll take it. <laughs> These, the, wow. the grandpa and the little boy there uh, walk randomly around this part and they can really screw you over sometimes if they get in your way. Okay, that was 
There's the, le the level after this. Has the worst random pathing in the whole game. that, you know, he's rolling up all these people and then they're being turned into stars. Um, you know, that might not be very healthy for you, but uh, you are reassured later on that everybody is safe and having a good time. So this is not a violent game. We're just barely ahead of that red shot. Uh, it's hard to See, get here's, this here's a part where you way. get that pole and then you use it to oh. vault over the on top of the ledge. Unfortunately, he got kind of unlucky there. So he has to go up the ledge the normal way. <laughs> That's annoying. I'm a little bit too small. I have to calm down. Find something. Okay. That was really bad. That's good. It's hard to keep your momentum going up that hill sometimes. And going up that ledge. Okay. That was a decent ending though. Oh man. Mine is my favorite level. Yeah, so the whole first half of this, you're in uh, you're in the park area we were in before. Puts a um, smile on my face, sorry. And there's all these things running around. And they just move around randomly and bonk into you and get in your way. But uh, it shouldn't be too big of a deal for uh, grass here. Dude, that sucks. Oh, this dog's right in the way of the meat. I'm kind of glad that bridge didn't go off. I don't know what I was, what was going to happen. And coming up ahead is a kind of a, you clip through an object uh, climbing up a wall. It can be really frustrating to, if it doesn't work right. 
I'm really big. This might be tricky. Okay, no, I got it. I think you're fine, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. What? And then, yeah. I don't know what hit me. That's awkward. There's a car or something. I'm um, okay now. We have a $200 donation from other RN. Thank you. Once you can pick up trees, it's really uh, game over for the everything else in the level. There's a guy in my stream chat who always says when I he's like really happy when I get the tree. So I hope you're watching, dude. I really want that house. You'll see uh, when you spin, you're you you're not uh, you don't become lopsided. Your katamari becomes perfectly round. So. Uh, a lot of times uh, you'll spin to pick up something that is in a weird spot because your hitbox is, it's very hard to tell where your hitbox is a lot of the time. So what you do is you charge a boost um, to pick up an object oh, man. Let me out. and then, you beat, but you don't uh, let it go off. Getting up there is a real pain sometimes too. But this looks like a pretty, pretty good time. Yeah. One more. Hey guys, just a reminder: yep. if you donate at least ten dollars during this run, you will be entered in for the Katamari Damacy 3D Piece and Portrait Prize. So time is going to be at the end of this next level. It's still about five minutes away, but I'll, I'll call it. <laughs> okay. I hope I don't fall. Okay, I didn't fall. Get hit by the elephant here? No. I guess I'm a little bit ahead of it. There it is. Here is a $25 donation from Alexander Kulain. Hi, I'm one of the two authors of the official Katamari comic strip. So I'm happy to see Katamari Damacy being run, since I spend every day writing, drawing, and thinking about that world. Great run so far, Grass. Thanks for keeping this marathon rolling. This is the worst thing in the world. Yeah, this led. World. There we go. Stop the train, why is it there? You, I don't think you did. I think you just made a really good time. I'm pretty sure I stopped unless I stopped it. Oh, if you stop anything on the cycle, the whole cycle stops. Yeah. I forgot. These things. We just yeah, found out about these parking really, circles really that he's trying to pick up, but they're kind of uh, obnoxious. I'm kind of waiting for the train here. There we go. I hate that trade. 
Yeah, there's some 12 meter tall mushrooms in the hill for some reason. bonk into stuff, stuff can get knocked off of your Katamari. And if you get stuck between two things, then you can just lose a lot of stuff until you're so small that you're no longer losing stuff. Which sometimes can be quite a lot. Luckily that wasn't uh, too disastrous. I'm still like really small here. I should be okay though. I'll just go slowly for this part. That's, that's a little unfortunate, but not the end of the world. I mean, it is the end of the world, but <laughs> yeah, only in the literal sense, yeah. I'll be done in like 15, 20 seconds. Oh. oh, let's do that. Okay. Fine. Fine. Okay. So now the credits are just going to play. Should I just leave them? Uh, wait, huh? Okay. Oh, I don't know. Um, They're not that awesome. Yeah, it's got moved, so.
Just a big shout out to the Yeti for designing all of AGDQ shirts that are available this year. And if you go to the Yeti.com slash SDA, you can purchase any of the AGDQ shirts. And three dollars from every shirt will go towards PCF. for three years now and it's really exciting to actually be here for the first time um, and thank you for having us and thanks to all the runners and the designers who created the shirts and the volunteers who run this whole thing. It's really awesome and we'll see you guys at the next one. We have a $50 donation from Thomas Arthur. Hi guys, had to start donating before, forget to. Everyone's doing a great job and hope these continue. Good luck. It may be a problem. I can't find the configuration file. There we go. Um, how do I mount this from here? How do I mount the game? I'm using DOSBox. 
Link's dude. Uh, he, he, he did it right. Oh, so do you know about this game? Kill the game key. I know nothing about the run, but I grew up Okay, so what, so what directory is it on? Uh, it was originally on V. Okay. Uh, yeah, I know absolutely nothing about the idea. Oh, you go back to the desktop. Okay. Hmm. Why am I? I don't remember how this works. You know, do I? I usually put it in the C drive and it works. I don't like this. Not used to this keyboard. So what, uh, what directory was it in? Uh, v. Well, just V? Yeah, V. And yes. Oh, Jazz 1C. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. I think that's it. Yep, there okay. we go. dollar donation from Grunt Blade. I'm so happy you guys are doing this. Keep up being great gamers and better people. <laughs> you should be. Yeah. Nope. I broke everything. Good job. I grew up playing this game. <laughs> like, I'm so excited to see one of the games I grew up playing because everyone's always like, hey, I grew up playing this on console. I didn't have a console until yeah. I was 15. <laughs> yeah, I was a primarily PC gamer. Mainly you because know, I'm European, so we don't know what console is. And if we do, it's slow as hell. <laughs> yeah, my parents were just, you know, they were like, you're not a PC game, that's good enough. They said they yeah. And you're not hearing anything? So we'd have to be a game in PC, like super completely, before they buy us another one. <laughs> and this was one of the first ones that we actually made. So I'm super excited. It's a good game. <laughs> we have a $50 donation from Pierre Limacher. Thank you for this awesome event. Can we have some heart for the French community and Mr. MV Restream? Thank you and love from France. There's a couple of sound cues that need oh, to listen for, but. Yeah. 
So this is Jazz Jackrabbit um, that is frozen. Thank you very much. What's going on? There. What is going on? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh, I think we're fine now, question mark. Is it showing on screen? Yeah, it's showing on screen. Okay, then we're good. All right, it seems to have smoothed out. This is, this is Jazz Jackrabbit for the PC Entertainment System. This is basically the PC's answer to the Sega and Nintendo consoles saying, hey, we can do blast processing as well. There's, there's no um, like limit to how fast you can shoot, right? Uh, no, there is no limit to how fast you can shoot. In fact, the game have, has rapid fire power-ups, but they're actually useless because you can fire faster manually than the rapid fire. Mm -hmm. So unlike Sonic, Jazz only has two speed. Jazz, uh, fast and way too fast. <laughs> Bad. Oh, I was worried that wasn't going to happen in a run. Can you, can you hear me? What is... Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, we were I'll talk louder. Oh. We were discussing the history of him playing it. All right, so I didn't know me to pick this up. <laughs> so now I've got to go look for the exit. There it is. All right, cool. The whole point is bonus stage is to get all the diamonds to get one up. You don't want to get in a speedrun. <laughs> I don't know why the level transitions are being really slow. This doesn't make sense. They were having trouble with the I want to be the guy too. Yeah. On computers, certain computers. So for what it's worth for people that are watching this based off of what the heck this game is about, it's basically the tortoise and the hare is the game. Yeah, the tortoise is still really mad for some reason. And decides yeah. to start taking over the universe. Uh, my space bar jammed. <laughs> this is going very well, this run. Just puts a new meaning to gotta go fast. No naps. Dame, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, but I probably broke your keyboard. The way the score screen works is that if you fire at a certain score... Ah, uh, okay. My S key's jammed. What is going on with this keyboard? It was working before I did this. Do you want me to get this one? Yeah, I might have to get a different one. What is it with S keys? That happened with uh, Hotline Miami, too. Yeah, I don't know. Pause the timer. Keyboard's broke. <laughs> well, all right. You, you, I guess you went too fast. Yep, too fast. Too much Sonic. Right, that should be okay. It's mainly for button mashing. Right, but that is comfortable for you. Okay. Okay. All right, three, two, one, go. I should be okay. So I've lost track of what I was saying before that happens. So yeah, the main original game consists of six episodes 
all with two world, uh, all with three worlds and two levels in each world. Some people might have noticed that this level ended sooner than it was supposed to. I this loading. I just I should still make it below it before I estimate, but this loading is atrocious for some reason. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I tested this on like three computers, and this never happens. This is one of my favorite soundtracks in the game, but unfortunately I'm going to go through this so fast we won't get to hear it. So you're running any percent right now, right? Uh, yeah, there's no real 100% for this game. Unless you count picking up all the items, but... You can actually miss items permanently, so that's not a good category. <laughs> you also run the sequel, right? Yes, I also run the sequel which is a much better game. <laughs> Looking at you, Mike. Uh, it was made by a group of people. Uh, Cliff, Cliffy B is probably the most well-known name. Yeah. He were, he's one of the guys behind, like, he works for Epic now, right? Yeah, but he, he works for Epic. Yeah, he did work for Epic. And he did, like, Unreal Tournament stuff. By the way, Cliffy, if you're watching this, please give us Jazz Jack Rabbit 3. For the sake of this run, I'm gonna take a bad. <clears throat> so, if a few people will probably notice the similarities between Sonic and Mega Man by now when it comes to this game. Uh -huh. And it's clearly a Mega Buster he's firing, and. Totally a Sonic ripoff. It's all blended, yeah. man. All right, so we're heading towards the first boss. Uh, it's May of '94, and it came out in I think U.S. in '95. Didn't it? No, it was in the U.S. in '94. It came out for um, not Box Box. This is so annoying. Yeah. There we go. So one thing I want to do is position myself when the boss explodes because the camera will pan towards the bosses and that wastes time if I'm standing in a bad spot. I have to say that I have once again tested this in about three computers and the loading time is not as bad. So this is the part where most people start to forget what the game actually looks like. Because this game was mainly played as, as a shareware version because the shareware version of this game was released just about everywhere. We have a $10 donation from Spike Vegeta. Shout out to Vortex. Oh, right. <laughs> Shout out to Vortail, one of my favorite chat mods, and a beast at Rayman Legends. Hope to see you back on the game soon, my friend. Also, hope to see you and the rest in 72 hours. Best of luck with your first GDQ run. You certainly deserve it, and keep having fun. Thanks, Greg. Can't wait to see you. So this game was, a, the main inspiration for this game was Zool, for the Amiga, right? Uh, Zool, Sonic, Mega Man, yeah. whole group of games, but it was mainly Zool and... Turrican. We actually have an Amiga here. Hmm? We have an Amiga here. Oh, we do? Yeah, uh, Robo Sparkle was playing Great Giannis Sisters earlier today. It's, uh, it's IE60. So did you always find Boxbox? Did you ever play? I always play on Boxbox. Plus, now the Dosbox is now allowed by SDE. I can actually submit runs for this game. <laughs> Um, there is basically no RNG whatsoever. Except for this. Yeah. The so RNG would be the one. Dropbox RNG. Trump's game RNG. Yeah.
We have a $20 donation from Steven Grant. Here's to hoping the keyboards don't break in future runs. <laughs> Next year, we'll be supporting early detection of keyboard abuse. Smiley face. <laughs> All right, that jump didn't look hard, but it was actually very hard. The whole point in that hole is that you're supposed to fall down and it's supposed to take you back to the beginning of the stage and you have to walk all the way back. But if you jump in a precise spot, you can actually get up. It is, this is like a crazy run. Yeah, I'm a picture from my childhood. <laughs> it took me months to beat this. Probably killing a lot of people's childhoods tonight. Are there any glitches specific to this? The uh, there's actually no real glitches for this game. This game is pretty well programmed. So I should probably explain about magic pixels. I call them magic pixels, they're so not actually magic pixels, but there are certain spots on spikes and jump pads where there are no hitboxes whatsoever. And I don't know why that is, but I'm gonna exploit it in this stage to skip through jump pads. $50 donation from Soup13, a Caro and Liz. Alright, let's see if we can get this. Nope, missed it. Oh well. Like a lot of games, um, when you get hit, you'll bounce back in the opposite direction that you were facing. So I turn around before I get hit so I can go the right way I want to go. There we go. So I pass right through that jump pad. I'll be doing it again here to save a big chunk of time. Uh, one thing I actually do hate about this game is how zoomed in the screen is for such a fast game. So there's a lot of blind jumps I have to make in this game. <coughs> ah, trolled. Platform trolling. There we go. I still save time though. Jazz, come on. No, no. Here comes boss number two. Wow. I don't know if anybody can see my hands, but I'm going to do a weird thing with my hands in this boss fight. It would have been so much easier if I just rebind keys, but... <laughs> so this is a boss where he's flying an ostrich. I'm not sure why he's doing that. <laughs> So I actually mesh faster with my right hand than the left. What do you have to load, Jazz? Seriously. So episode three can be a little bit scary. There's a few moments where if I miss some pickups, I could be in a lot of trouble. $50 donation from Paul Ross. Last month, a friend of mine linked me to a video from AGDQ 2013 and I was instantly hooked. Great fun for an excellent cause. Keep up the good work. Alright, so I took no damage on that stage. It's pretty hard to do. It gives me an extra shield. So I can jump in the spikes. Just take the damage there. So 
So a few people might have noticed I'm playing this game in normal. And there's going to be those elitist people who are saying that I'm a scum because I'm playing on normal and not hard. Um, but the fact is, turbo mode, which is the hardest mode, is technically the fastest way to run this game. Because when you play in turbo, uh, Jazz has a speed boost. His primary speed is much higher. Okay, I got that. Um, but enemies have double the health. You can only take three hits. The enemies double or even triple in the amount that there are. It's really crazy. So it's basically a different run entirely. So a run I might try at some point. Just because um, the challenge of this game is slowly wearing off. Right, so I'm going to go for some precise jumps here. Uh, probably won't get them. See what happens. All right, first jump. Excellent. Missed the second one. I can already tell. Yeah. All right. So this next world is Button Mash Central. All right. Come on. You can do it. You have to run Doom soon. Here's a $100 donation from Kai Steel Smith. Who's to saving the world, fixing lag, and working that keyboard? Lightyear is another person who runs this game, and it's probably the only other person who runs this game. But he only runs episodes 1 and 3. I'm not sure why not 2, um, but he only picks 1 and 3. Does he only have all the things? Hmm? Does he, does, does, can he only just get all the things? Uh, he should have 1, 2, and 3. I miss all that time, good. Alright, so here comes some button mashing. Let's hope I don't get hit. Ah, nearly. You can get through that without taking a single hit, but it's quite difficult, especially the last part. So these are jump boots, they let, spa they let Jazz jump even higher. I keep saying Spaz, I so want to play the second game. The second game I've been playing with characters, Jazz and Spaz. Uh, Spaz, Jazz, and Lori. Although we don't talk about Lori. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lori's actually okay to speedrun with, is that she can't do any glitches. Loading again. We'll still be below estimate, don't worry. We have a $10 donation from Alpha Moan. It's awesome to see the games of my childhood being utterly destroyed. Here's hoping the money can do just as good of a job at destroying cancer as the speedrunners are at destroying games. Yep. These bosses do do things, but um, they never live long enough for you to see it. Uh, so here's episode four. This episode is thankfully quite easy. A bit of a letdown, actually. I think I may avoid getting hit. There we go, cool. These bowls are the worst. They really cause you to lose balance. They don't crush you though, which is strange. Oh, 
Yeah. <laughs> Who does that anymore? That's how you get across the spikes if you're being a filthy casual. Yeah. <laughs> This level is a big maze. Uh, thankfully, I've already played the game before, so I know where to go out. That was weird, my spacebar jumped again. Keyboard issues today. No, 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 this is fine now, we got it back. So if we go to an ace, ace level, yes, ace physics do apply on the stage. So there's nothing better than a really fast character sliding around. If I'm making strange faces when I'm mashing the buttons, I apologize. So do you know what's faster than a fast character on ice physics? An even faster character on ice physics. <laughs> yeah. This could be a little bit worrisome, so just hoping. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Not nice. That first jump where I squeeze between those platforms is quite hard to do. Again, you're gonna have to take my word for it, because nobody else in the world runs this game. Is, is the tempo of the music directly related to how fast you go? Uh, mm, it's just depending on whether or not you have speed boots. Yeah, the music will always stay at the same speed. When you don't have a speed boost, no matter if you're walking or running, so this stage is incredibly easy, so if you want to read some donations, now would be a good time. We have a $10 donation from Vosh Vosh. Good luck on your Doom Race work, Hale. My cat keeps warning me every time she hears her voice, and I think she likes you more than me. And try not to break any more keyboards. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. Should have brought my own keyboard. She's a beast. We have a $15 donation from Beardini. Vortail, don't mess up the parrot. Don't rage too hard in Doom 2, by the way. How did you hit me? Come on. So coming up next is boss number four. I'm not going to say anything about this boss until we get there. By the way guys, the Bioshock Bid War will be ending soon, so make sure you get your donations in if you want to choose the game. So that was a boss. <laughs> Even during casual playthrough, I've never let that guy live long enough to know what he actually does. I'm pretty sure he spit that guy. I think he does that. <laughs> Alright, so this is the hardest episode in the game. Uh, there's a lot of really scary sections in this one. That is a good face. <laughs>
So I've not really explained the bird. The bird kind of follows you around and shoots things whenever it gets within range. It also takes an extra hit for you. So if you take damage, you will not actually lose health. By the way, the bird is MVP in this entire game, and you'll find out why near the end. What are you doing? Now, if I wasn't in a marathon, I wouldn't be going for this, but since I am, I just want to be safe. So yeah, these red diamonds, I picked up one earlier. You do not want to pick them up because they take you to a bonus stage, which wastes time. Which is a shame because the bonus stages are awesome. Yeah, they are quite awesome. Better than Sonic CDs. Shots filed. <laughs> Got a fifty dollar donation from Hamburger. Grew up playing Jazz Jackrabbit and played way too much Jazz 2 on dial up. Twitch chat's like screaming, why is my stream not loading every time the game freezes? <laughs> uh, okay, that was weird. I took damage but didn't take knockback. Yeah. Right, whatever. So this is, I'd say this is RNG, it actually isn't, but okay, here we go. Sometimes I don't catch that platform and I'm never entirely sure why I just suddenly fall through it. I also still have one shield, which is really handy. There we go. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> so I'm confident two people at um, Epic Games who were making this got fired. Because I get the feeling they probably got together and said, what do people really hate in video games? <laughs> and they never brought this up. So as we know, water levels suck on every single game. This game is absolutely no ex exception. The water levels in this stage are extremely slow, so you have a good five minutes of donation reading if you want it. We have a $50 donation from Uber Game Hunter. Gotta love a PC block of games. And what better way to start it off than with one of the major platformers, Sonic with Guns. I mean, Jazz <laughs> Jack Rabbit. Spaceship World is the best world, by the way. Here is a $50 donation from Daniel. Awesome event and a great Jazz Jack Rabbit run. Here's a $56 donation from Bite Code. I lost my aunt to cancer, so I'm happy to donate to the Prevent Cancer Foundation and support this great marathon. By the way, if I had a lower button, I soft locked the game. There's no way to get out of this stage if I accidentally hit the bottom button.
Like these sleeping turtles have really big hitboxes because they're only sleeping because they're not underwater. When they go underwater, they become they start to swim, where their sprites are bigger. Uh, but when they're sleeping, their sprites are smaller, but their hitboxes are still the same size. So it's difficult to tell where you're actually going to get hit by them. And there's a part coming up where it gets really scary. Just a reminder, make sure you get your donations in for the Bioshock bid war, because that'll be ending soon. Alright, so I could potentially die here. See what happens. So here's hoping I can one cycle this boss. This requires some really good button mashing. <coughs> uh, I'm not in the right position. Hold on. I'm going to wait for him to hit me. All right, so I kind of waited there for him to attack me because if you, if you kill this owl uh, while it's trying to pick up an egg, the game soft locks and it'll explode forever. <laughs> it's a weird glitch that somehow is still in the game. It's not a beneficial glitch. This is not my favorite stage. In order to do this stage fast, you need to take a lot of hits, which is really scary, especially for the section here. And it's pretty much impossible to avoid that hit. Could have avoided that one, but I'm bad at games. Get up, get up, thank you. This is kind of a shortcut to take you up here. All right. uh, that's a good question. I haven't exactly, I haven't exactly timed it. Get over here. Thank you, platform. I just know roughly when it's going to run out if I don't screw up. So that's, I think it's roughly 20 seconds. After damage is one second, probably. About one second. It's one or two seconds after taking damage, but the like the star that gives you invincibility is about twenty seconds. Okay. This star. <clears throat> I should also note to people that this is only going to be six episodes. There were three episodes brought in later, but they were more add-ons than actual episodes. So they will not be being played in this marathon. There were two holiday episodes in the 94, 95, I think. Mm. I think I just turned the music off. I think they released on the version when they came out. Oh, I did. Uh, yeah, I think so. Alright, so this level is damage boost central. Um, you'll be damage boosting all over the place, so you want to keep as many heads as possible. Alright, well, 
already screwing that up. We have a $15 donation from John. So glad to see gamers uniting the benefit of an amazing cause. And bloody tough to see a fellow Brit running a classic 90s platformer like a beast. Oh no, what was that about, Jazz? All right, not gonna lie, this level went pretty well. I've usually only got one hit left by this point. All right, so we're now approaching the final stages of the game. And I really hope I don't screw this up because it'd be really embarrassing otherwise. Because it's quite a big trick to this stage. Okay, so there are some really dangerous strats that I would usually do if I was doing an actual attempt, but I'm going to be really safe because this bulb needs to stay alive. Alright, cool. So the next stage is the final stage. Now, the beginning of this stage basically shows you how big it is. So you have to travel a very long distance to get inside. There's a lot of really hard tricks, yada yada yada. But we're going to skip all of that. Bird MVP. Yep. <laughs> that saves about 50 seconds, by the way. Because the final level is really long. All right, final boss. He did the clip. Can put that out. He did the clip. Perfect fight. All right, timer ends when the score screen finishes. And time. There's his party? Ah. <laughs> Considering the obnoxious load times and the accidental bonus stage, that's a pretty good time. Jazz Jack right here is a pretty hard game when it's not for a child for me. <laughs> Alright, so that was Jazz. Rup roll. Okay, so what's up next? Bioshock. Bioshock, okay. Well, I better get the heck out of here. I gotta go have a wonder for him. The Bioshock runner in the room? Okay.
happy to start my tarot deck, I guess. Thank you. We've got a $100 donation from Falcon Eye. The power of the rumble for the Germanch community. Shout outs to Mr. MV. Hello, hello, hello. Testing. Hello, yeah. So, hello. Sound good? <laughs> Going full stream, eh? Risky. Dude, yeah. full stream is the way to go. It definitely is. Are you a scrub? <laughs> he is scrub thunder. <laughs> Dude, I thought you were the Bioshock beast. <laughs> Sure, there should be some background music, but I can. Later. Okay. Nice. And the on laser log. And that's. So uh, that's all. Dude. Thanks. I appreciate it. I, you should watch him, though. He's better. He's the Bioshock Beast. Did he get red hair? <laughs> Good. Uh, Twitch.tv slash blood thunder. Uh, there's an underscore between them, and the O's in blood are zeros. The timer's going to start after the first cutscene, just to let you know. Um, and for those wondering, I'm going to be playing the game on easy because the difficulty in this game does not matter for the speedrun, uh, and it allows me to do a trick in Apollo Square that I can't also do on. Also because he's a scrub. That too. <laughs> scrub Thunder. So this is just setting the, uh, the plot for the game. They told me. The plot's pretty deep. Son. Yep. You're special. You were born to do great things. No spoilers, everyone in Twitch chat. <laughs> you know what? Would you kindly not spoil this game? <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is a let's play. We're going to play this game intentionally, by the way, just a reminder. Yep. No glitches or anything. Yeah, this is a glitchless run. This is all intentional. We're just going to beat it under an hour, though, just a reminder. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
By the way, just to throw in something real quick, we made a quick bet on one glitch, but we'll talk about that more when we get there. I thought we weren't doing glitches. Oh, oh, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa, whoa, my bad. I just lost. Uh, dishonored any percent. The timer's going to start in just a moment. Uh, I won't need to know for about 20 He's minutes. He's doing or so. SDA time. Uh, the timer yeah. starts now. So it starts from first movement. Yeah. So we're going to take a little shortcut right here. It's not a glitch. We're just going to swim through the fire. There's a lot of doing that in the game. Yeah. Unfortunately, the beginning of the game is kind of slow, but once we get into the actual part of Rapture, which is the city uh, the game is based in, it really starts to pick up. So I'll try to do some cool little tricks here and there, but. We'll see. So we've got to make our way into the lighthouse and then down to the bathosphere, which is, um, for those that don't know the game, the way you get around the city. You'll see me do this quite a bit, make my way in the dark uh, as the game's trying to set the mood. Scrub Thunder. <laughs> so there's a neat little trick I was trying to do there where you get outside of the bathosphere, which is what I'm riding in, and you can kind of just look around Rapture um, like you're not supposed to. It's a tricky little jump, but you can get it consistently yeah. if you practice. <laughs> <laughs> if you practice. <laughs> Slideshow time. Yep. I am Andrew Ryan. As I Once again, we're just learning about the, uh, the plot of the game. Is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow? Not a man crosses the logs to the fork. No, says the man in the Vatican, it belongs to God. No, says the man in Moscow, it belongs to everyone. I rejected. chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose Rapture. So uh, here's the main city, Rapture. Um, it's underwater, obviously. Not much more to it. What's the name of the whale? Uh, what's uh, you call the whale by name? I don't think we actually named the whale. You never did? We named the bees in Bioshock 2 and the shark. Can we name the whale in honor of uh, the marathon? <laughs> there you go. There it's, we go. It's been said. It's too late. So let's to change it. See? So here, here, here goes Echo. <laughs> So now we've actually made it in the rapture, but we're not quite out of the slow part of the game quite yet. Um, it's a very boring part. <laughs> but something I've been hyping up in my own stream for a while is that I've found a new little time saver, and uh, I'll be showing that off in this area as well. Nice rats. <coughs> Wait, is this the new strat you're talking about? It might be. Dude, you're hiding strats for me? What a cheater. <laughs> By the way, rest in peace, Joey. So the guy that just died is named Johnny. He's not too great. No. He has a gun, but he doesn't use it. He, he just dies. He initially... <laughs> Now, to be honest, this part is supposed to scare you when you first play the game, because Bioshock's trying to build this horror atmosphere, but initially, when you start getting plasmids, the game's not scary anymore. 
Yeah. Exactly. It's a very uh, boring part of the game as well, because a lot of it is walking. There's not really much to do. And now we meet uh, her main guiding character, Atlas. He tries to befriend us to lead us through Raptor to get to Andrew Ryan, who is the guy that actually built the city. Um, I won't go too much in the plot because there's a pretty big spoiler later on for those that haven't played it. For now, we're just going to make our way through this area. Right where this pillar is, there's a small invisible wall that you can jump on top of. It doesn't save any time, but just something I go for it. This is the first item we'll get in the game. It's the, uh, well, I guess it's the first weapon. We already got one of the items. And fun fact about this couch, it'll always be on fire, no matter how long you wait. And now we get our first plasma, which is something you'll soon, uh, soon see. Now, quick question. How many times have you seen this cutscene? Too many. That's a good answer. Um, um, this is a let's play. <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, yeah. Don't fall down? Oh, whoops. Seems like it would take like actual conscious yeah. effort to throw yourself over there. You would think he would be like, whoa, let's not do that. Another little fun fact about the, uh, the subtitles for this part, they named the first Splicer Splicer 1, the next one Splicer 2, but then they change it to Splicer Male and Splicer 2 for whatever reason. Uh, huh. Yeah, someone's a little insecure. So he's still Splicer 1, but in just a second he'll go to the... There it is, Splicer Mail. <laughs> and now the main reason most people remember Bioshock. The Big Daddy. The Big Daddy and the Little Sister. Blood was supposed to cosplay as a Little Sister, but unfortunately he scrubbed out. Yeah. Well, you're supposed to be my big daddy, and you scrubbed out, too. So. Dude, have you? I did. I did. I, I couldn't get the suit on. That was too short. <laughs> no. <laughs> Donate the turn the volume off. Alright, so now we have Electro Bolt, which is what we just picked up. Uh, and it's kind of like a superpower for those that haven't played the game. This one will let, uh, lets me shoot Electro Bolt. Pretty self explanatory. Lightning out of hands. Fun stuff. Nice. nice. Yeah, the donation is bidding large for this game. Uh, not for 20 minutes, but if you want to let people know, you can. Right. So what are going to draw for us? I'm going to try to draw something. I don't know what it'll turn into, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, looks like a deer. Um, a jet? Is that a jet? It's beautiful, whatever it is. It looks like a bird. <laughs> a butterfly? It's a jackal. It's a jackal? A jackal. <laughs> it is Echo the Whale. <laughs> it's, uh, it's an abstract. The return of Echo. So we're going to pass up a uh, pistol here, which is normally the first actual gun you encounter. You can get most of the guns many times over uh, in the run, and it's just not worth picking up. 
So we have one more area of sitting around doing nothing, but this one has a cool uh, cutscene. A lot of these cutscenes are pretty much just introducing core enemies as well as just the atmosphere of Bioshock to you. But after this section, once we get to Medical Pavilion, uh, Blood will do his uh, work and show you how non-broken this game is. Yeah. So it's far it's not been broken at all, but no. uh, there's very, a reason the game's under an hour. Very intentional. Because if it was broken, it wouldn't be there. Are you going to do the baps? <laughs> so the next little area, I have to just kill all the splicers. But I'm just going to go ahead and explain what the, uh, the trick I've been hiding for so long is. So at the end of this level, there's a certain part you have to wait through. And there used to be a really good way of skipping it, walking around the corner. Um, but back in September, I went on Twitch and searched Bioshock stuff. And surprise, surprise, there's actually a developer playing through it with commentary. And he points out a part where a speedrunner could actually use a trick. But no one in the speedrunning community knew about it at all. And it's been out there for about three years now, so I'm going to show that off now. So all we have to do is take Electro Bolt, which is actually now pretty handy. Walk in here and zap the door. Wow. That blows the old strat out of the water completely. <laughs> Thank you for showing me that. I told you you'd like it. That was beautiful. Yeah, if you but mess that up, you lose about a minute. And yeah, you reset there a lot if you don't get that uh, trigger skip right. Yeah, or the intentional that the plasma opens the door? Yes. No, Every that's actually a bug. It doesn't work on any other door in the game, unfortunately. That's the only time we'll have to hack anything. But, uh, it's pretty mandatory. For now. Uh, the hack is the same if you boot it up from this desktop. But if you do multiple runs, it switches. I don't know why it does that, but you know, it's pretty helpful if you can know the pattern. So this is really where the run picks up. Because once we get telekinesis, we really abuse the game. I mean, play the game intentionally really well. <laughs> yeah, so now we're going to go pick up two more plasmids. Um, and we're going to get rid of Electro Bolt. We no longer need it. First one we're going to get is Incinerate. And we need that really only to get uh, telekinesis, which is really, really broken. Um, it makes combat in this game a complete joke. Now we have incinerate. Which, as you can probably guess, is fire. You may notice I'm running past splicers and not actually killing them. That's intentional. I don't need to fight them. But it's very important I don't kill this splicer before he throws the table. Uh, and I'll come back to that in just a moment. Pick that up. And here's telekinesis. So goodbye, Electro Bolt. Said this well. All right. So the reason the table needed to be thrown at me is because it actually changed the properties of the table. So it's unlike any other in the game at the moment. Right, so you take it with me. Put it right. It's 
very frustrating table, by the way, as you may notice. Yeah, because its properties changed, it's now solid when I hold it with telekinesis. And I may have lost it. Okay, so it's the table. Uh, which makes it really difficult to walk with it. And it allows me to do this. So, yeah. The main point of going over the wall instead of around it is to de uh, not activate that vital chamber there. So we're going to abuse that in just a moment. Yeah, there's a huge reason. Yeah. Can you get Buck? Uh, we'll see. I believe in you. What can I do with this one, Okay, so I need to take some damage. Um, need more damage. And we're good. So I'm gonna go for a little trick, but I don't really need to explain it unless I get it, because it won't make sense. It's not an easy trick to do. So I just need to kill Steinman, who is the quote unquote boss of the area. He allows you to leave, but he also locks a certain door that we uh, now bypass by dying. Which is why we didn't activate the body chamber in that area. It would send you back there if you die, typically. Um, and what the locking of the door does is it sends you to another area of medical pavilion, which has a very long cutscene with little sisters and who knows what else. We're going to skip all that and still go to the exit. How much time does that say? Uh, probably three minutes. As the run progresses, you'll learn that telekinesis is a very, very potent uh, plasmid, as well as just being incredibly overpowered. Yeah. And the next, next area doesn't really have a big skip, but it introduces a smaller glitch. Or I guess we're not doing glitches, my bad. Um, yeah, yeah, no glitches, man. Come on. Keep it legit. Yeah, Easter egg. It's uh, exactly what it is. That'll uh, come in handy over and over again. So I'll explain that in just a minute. First, we need to get there. I mean, he's, it's not developer Exactly. Yep. If you can do it. It's in there. It gets a lot better. So this is where the um, Easter egg comes in handy. We can skip any NPC dialogue we want by playing a radio message over top of it. And we skipped it. Mm, no, you can do it on uh, consoles as well. Yeah, the speedrun for console and PC is exactly the same besides loading screens. And now we're just waiting for this part to end. Typically, you'll pick up the grenade launcher right here, but um, we're just going to skip it for now because we'll preserve it for later. And I can actually skip this dialogue, but I don't want to until the goal message appears. Right. If you skip it when the door um, is closed, but uh, the goal message hasn't popped up, it'll stay closed forever. Solid softball. Yeah. That's kind of a soft lock. Well, you soft lock unless you know what you're doing, and then you can re diary skip it somehow. And it's kind of too complicated to explain. And now we're just doing the uh, intended goal, which is getting a camera and taking some pictures. Why not? Take a quick selfie. There's no reason to actually pick up those machine gun rounds because I won't need them. But I do it anyways. So there's one picture. We need two more. Let's 
just run past all these things. When I first learned about the photo uh, route here, it blew my mind because uh, learning this game, you don't expect to take the photos right here and then be done with it. Normally, you're uh, supposed to go inside, find the splicer through these really scary atmospheres. Yet again, Bioshock wants you to be scared, but uh, you can do a really good job in the speed run. Yeah, typically when you take those pictures, you're not supposed to know they're right in the doorway. So you have to chase them down. But you can just open the door and take the picture. And, uh, get it over with. I was going to go for a small death warp here, but they didn't do enough damage, unfortunately. Alright, so here's the grenade launcher we were uh, talking about before. This is a really cool trick. So we're going to dire skip past this door. And this is usually where you give up your weapons in the game to do uh, another type of boss fight. But if you just give up your weapons and then pick up something else, like the grenade launcher, you can just keep it. Why not? Yet again, all intentional. Just yep. keep in mind, everybody. So we're going to melt this ice so I can get some frag grenades. Skip another message. Anytime you see me go to the menu, I'm skipping a message. And now we just need to wait for the boss to, to actually spawn. And if you didn't realize how broken telekinesis was, um, you soon will. And he's dead. I'm also not picking up my weapons, which is why I kept the grenade launcher. Um, it costs three seconds or so to pick them up. And you gotta save the, uh, those frames. Exactly, save the frames. Don't know yet. <laughs> Donate now to save the little sisters or doom them all. Your choice. Well, you don't really doom them, you just make them evil. Yeah. This is one of the games where saving them is fast. Exactly. <laughs> So I mentioned before about picking up weapons throughout the game. And we're just going to get the pistol here. Uh, normally you would get this back when you get your weapons, but I think it's good to hear. Nice, good shot. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Try to be optimistic. Nice. <laughs> so you can just... <laughs> it's not quite done yet. We have to blow up the bathosphere to continue. Yeah, this is very important to the run. Yep. Right. He just murdered a family, just for a reminder. It was all him. Yep. It wasn't Fontaine. Oh. Oh. So you just walk out the door when you hit the lever. It's simple as that. Really solid program. Another dire skip. <coughs> There's actually some really interesting mechanics behind leaving an area with radio messages and diary messages, and we'll actually get into that later on. Um, we'll abuse it the opposite way, which doesn't really make sense, but you'll see. Okay, here we go. I just did a little trick there to get the door open quicker. It saves about two seconds, I recall. I didn't know that trick either. Hiding all the strats. That's why you should watch my tutorial video. <laughs> the next weapon we're going to pick up is the machine gun. Very conveniently placed. Um, I'm going to need it in just a moment. So now we're taking some photos again. 
and that gives us a sports boost, which is an increase in movement speed. Uh, for the longest time, I didn't think it did anything, but uh, I actually went back and tested it last week, and it, it does help. So it's back in the route. Nice. How much does it increase your movement speed? Uh, it's ten percent. So I'm going to start setting up the the biggest skip in the game. Uh, it's sort of difficult, but. We'll see. So I need to take the pallet with me and take out these splicers and security measures. Right. And that's just because they can destroy the pallet and I don't want them to. Here we go. Arcadia skip, the bane of all tricks besides uh, Prometheus. This trick is very difficult to do. Uh, blood makes it very easy though. So we need to put the pallet next to the tree and grab a manure bag. The whole goal of this is to get around a trigger uh, that would otherwise close the door to the exit. I'm actually going to do a quick save because if I mess it up, it's 15 minutes out of the way. Um, so the tricky part is actually getting from the pallet to the tree. Uh, the tree does not like you trying to get up in it. The tree is the real jerk here. Yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and position this. And the newer bag's gone. All right, let's grab another one. Just a reminder, he cannot look to the right at all. Yeah, if I look to the right of the tree, I actually activate the trigger. Walking or looking at it, um, I'll do that. I'll and if he it. activates the trigger, he has to do the intentional okay. way. The screen's going to go black, but it's going to come back. Um, that's because of the, the trick I used to get the door open. Uh, for some reason, it does that. I don't actually understand why. And there's no audio in the game anymore. So it gets the next Stay uh, audioless for the entire run? I don't know if he really is. We're old. <laughs> All right, let's quick load. We did it for a reason. Oh, there it is. Yet again, this trick is very difficult to do. And usually, if you get to this point, it's frustrating. Yeah, this is usually the run killer. Um, yes. But only because it can take you so long. But. And the funny thing is, it gets harder as we go along. I'm just going to do a quick save up here. Once I'm here, I should be able to get it pretty quickly, unless I shoot. <laughs> 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 All right, nice. so now I'm up in the tree. It took a little bit longer than I'd like, but it's fine. And we need a little bit more height, so we use the manure bag once again. Shoot a little bit and jump over the trigger. Yet again, he skipped an intentional quest to uh, for scavenge hunting or scavenging hunting in the farmer's market, where it usually takes you about uh, how much time would you say? Fifteen Blood? minutes or so. Oh, Lord. With an optimized route, it's fifteen minutes, but. For those not knowing what that skipped, uh, if you've played the game, where you get the bees? We skip all of that. The bees are the best, though, but unfortunately yeah. we have to skip them. And we're going to do another really big skip. Unfortunately, this is a really cool level, and we just don't get to see it. Sander Cohen, no. the best. Yeah, we grab the stuff. Stack it. Right, now we're going to do something that you might think is counterintuitive, sinking the bathysphere. It's uh, what you use to leave the level. But, uh, if I do this right, I shouldn't need it. And I'm going to quick save just because. Marathon lock. So now I need to wait until I get a certain goal message. Uh, I can kind of skip ahead to get it. And that gives me my, my walking speed back, because it's actually reduced when you enter Fort Frolic, and that allows me to get up on this rail. So I'm going to do this trick, and then I'm going to explain what I did. Really nice. nice job. Nice. So when you sink the bathysphere, it visual, <laughs> visually goes away, but the hard coding for it's actually still there. So you can just find the lever that you would normally pull, and if you do that, you can still use it. So, pretty easy. 
So this is the part where I need to know good or bad ending. Uh, good ending is in the lead. Good ending? Okay. How much are on uh, each uh, both uh, sides? Good ending has six hundred and fifty-three dollars, and bad ending has four hundred seventy-one dollars. Okay. So for the good ending, we're just going to do the any percent route, and that means we don't touch any of the little sisters. We don't harvest or save them. We just leave them alone. Uh, if we were doing the bad ending, we'd harvest two of them, but uh, that's about it. So I need to play that message off the body and then skip it. That gets the door uh, open quicker. Just over here. We will still need to kill two big daddies, but that's just for the goal objective. Um, you have to obtain a quest item from inside their bodies. A quick question, when you loot a body, uh, do the items stay consistent, or is it always a different kind of item when you loot a body? Uh, for bodies, it's pretty much random. With a lot of the, the items like trash cans and uh, crates, you can usually get the same stuff, but uh, bodies are different. Uh, yeah, the radio messages are always consistent like that. So we're going to leave him alone for just right now. We'll come back to him. What I'm doing is activating the goal, and I'm also upgrading my damage. Um, by taking a picture of him, I can do a little bit more damage against him. And if I pick up this tonic, it actually gives me more damage for each uh, picture I take of him. So Now we are fully equipped to kill Big Daddies. There'll be a lot of uh, death warp abuse here in a few moments. And there's a store code. So I can just run through these. Get the nitroglycerin and... When your health gets low enough, you actually get invincibility for a few seconds. Um, so it can really mess up with death warps, unfortunately. So if Big Daddy's interacting with the little sister, you can't damage him, which is what I'm testing now. Uh, I don't want to waste grenades if he's not going to die. So, you guys want a good ending? We're just going to leave her there. Save little sisters. So I actually abused the invincibility, uh, so I could go and seeing what I needed from the big daddy and then to die immediately. Now we'll be back to this fighting chamber. Uh, pretty helpful. We're about halfway done getting the quest items at this point. So if you see me damaging myself, that's for a death warp, which I'm about to do after I make the bomb. Just spamming the use key. Now we're going to take a shortcut to actually go place the bomb, which normally involves a really long and tedious process. Tricky jump. Yep, so we're going to do another quick save. This one's not really a one-shot trick, but it helps if I do mess it up. Which I did, so. Nice. Nice. So once I place the bomb, I need to go back up, because that's where the exit is. So I just kill myself once again. And if you guys have not played the game and don't want any spoilers, I recommend not watching the next few minutes of the run. Because 
The biggest spoiler I cannot skip. Uh, just need to get past these. All right. Once again, I don't need to kill him. I just need to run past him. So I actually lied when I said there wasn't a way to skip this part. We can actually skip it, but we can't find a way to get back into the room. So uh, just hope for one day we'll find a skip. Someday, someday. So it's a little dark here, but there's actually an invisible wall I need to jump over by getting on top of the spinning machine. And there you go. Usually you just have to wait for the power to come back on. Too slow for me. Right. I hope you guys like spoilers. I'm surprised we haven't heard many would you kindly puns. Okay. <laughs> oh man. The assassin has this is a great judgment. My final and now he's come to murder. Spoiler alert coming ahead, guys. Yeah. What separates a man from a slave? I have no idea. We'll find out though, I think. <laughs> Some sort of symbolism. So, Blood, out of, the, uh, out of all the cutscenes in the game, which is your favorite? I have to ask. It's the very last one. Nice. That's my favorite, too. You gotta stab him. That is the best satisfying feeling. Spoilers. Force down by something less than a man. Something breaks a sleepwalk through life until they are activated by a simple phrase spoken by the forgotten master. Is a man <laughs> sent to kill or a slave? Alright, so that's a part one of the cutscene. Now we're into the fun part. Big emphasis on the phrase, would you kindly, obviously. Yeah, I don't know why they keep saying that. I have no idea. Some sort of inside joke. It's pretty catchy, I like it. Yeah. Possibly. The slave obeys. The writers couldn't think of anything else. <sighs> Very unoriginal. Kill! Amantuses. So if you skip the first half of this, um, and then manage to find a way back into the room, this cutscene completely goes out of whack. Andrew Ryan ends up behind you and you're hitting nothing and he, someone it's dies. It's absolutely beautiful. You're pretty much beating up an imaginary man. And now it comes this very slow and kind of boring descent of the game. We've had the big plot twist, but now it just kind of drags out. So we dire skip past the door. We're going to cremate his body on the way out. Why not? Out of respect. Nice. 
guy thunder. So if you use incinerate when you're falling, uh, and you go into this cutscene, when you load up Olympus Heights, which is the next area, you still hear the uh, incinerate sounds, which I don't understand. But Wait a second now. There we go. It's a weird little bug I found doing runs, but... So although the story kind of goes downhill from here, the speedrun actually has some pretty cool tricks. Um, one of my favorites is in this area. There's actually a lot of areas, or uh, a lot of props used in this area that are repeated in Bioshock 2, like these fish table. Um, you see these in the beginning of Bioshock 2 as well. Will you be doing a little sister skip? I will try. Please, teddy bear, please. So I'm just waiting for this little sister to actually run. So if you jump on this little bear just right, you can actually jump on top of the little sister's head. And uh, just kind of stand here for a bit while we wait. You can stand in between them too, which defies gravity. You can stand in this little girl. I don't know what that defies, but probably a few laws. So now we're just on a fetch quest. We have to go collect some uh, some items that we need. I don't need to fully open the door, just enough to get underneath it with the crouch. Save a little bit of time. And I mentioned earlier about radio messages having a reverse effect on doors. Um, and that's what I'm going to set up now. But first we're going to do a quick save. Because this can go terribly, terribly wrong if I don't pay attention. So I need to play a very long message. Oh, barely made it out. All right. So typically I would go to Apollo Square, which is the next area, because I activated the door. But because there's a radio message playing, which is NPC dialogue, uh, the game won't actually transition me quite yet. Just keep in the back of your minds that the game's trying to take me to the next area. Everything else will make sense in a moment. Hopefully. You have to be careful there because if you play the diary message and then leave, sometimes it'll warp you because the radio message is done playing. You have to really make sure the message starts playing. Um, that was the wrong group. Okay. This is the point where I can kind of check my ammo for the next few areas. We're actually doing really well on ammo too, so should be good. First thing I'm going to do when I get up here is take out the security camera. This if it catches you, you have to wait a minute. You can't do anything except wait. Yeah. Hopefully you've been keeping the thing I've told you to keep in the back of your minds. If not, this won't make any sense. Nice job. So yeah, the game was trying to take me to Apollo Square, um, but I just want to complete what I need to do before I let it do that. And that saves about a minute and a half of walking, so nothing exciting gets skipped this time. Good 
the same. Yeah, so at this point in the game, you're actually given various plasmids that you never picked up. Uh, I never got Winter Blast 3, but it's part of the actual story, I guess. And luckily, in the speedrun, you get a few that are actually pretty helpful. Winter Blast 3 isn't extremely helpful, but uh, you can have some fun with it. So that's a small little death warp for me to get back outside the building. It doesn't save too much time, but if your health is low enough, you might as well go for it. This alarm doesn't matter at all. I'd rather not set it off because it just becomes a nuisance, but we're about to leave the area anyways. And this is one of the main reasons we run the game on easy, uh, is for the next little skip coming up here. So I'm going to jump in this elevator shaft and fall down. If you do this on normal or hard, you just die. There's no way around it. Mad Skip's taking the elevator down. Yes. The compound is taking off. The of the Last chance, off. kids coming up. <laughs> the worst skip of all. Yeah. Frustrating them. So the second biggest skip in the game is coming up. <laughs> um, we'll see how it goes. Would you say this skip is more frustrating to deal with in Arcadia, or is Arcadia the worst? This would probably be the worst. Probably. Arcadia is just finicky. This one you actually have to get really lucky with. Yeah. Because it's your last chance. Yeah. Sadly, it's always the cool areas that we skip in the game and not the boring ones. Yeah. Normally, what you're supposed to do is gather uh, parts of a big daddy suit to make yourself into a big daddy, but uh, yeah, we're going to skip that. So I'm going to do a quick save because if I mess this up, um, there's no way of fixing it. Last chance, kid. Uh, you so Last Chance Kid is pretty popular <laughs> as a, uh, a quote for this game. You can probably guess Last why. There we go. You it in now, and I'll leave this nice you job. <laughs> That's always a very difficult trick to explain because it doesn't really have an easy explanation. Um, there's basically two triggers that you need to activate. Uh, and you activate them in the reverse order so you actually skip one of them, allowing you to get to the door. Um, I could go into more specifics, but... Okay, this could be world record if he gets a redhead little sister. Oh, Unfortunately, nope, he got blonde, so this is going to be the worst run at <laughs> AZDQ. So that's, I'm sorry to tell you. Yeah. It's just a joke. <laughs> In the world record video, he has a red uh, head little sister, and they give you three sets of colors of uh, hair. Blonde is the worst, brunette is eh, and red hair is world record face. Yeah. Exactly. So she can either run or walk right there, but if she ends up walking, you can just... Uh do that to get her over here. For the majority of the area, you don't want the little sister to run to you by any means. It's actually a lot slower, but for this stretch, it's pretty helpful. And if you still haven't figured out that telekinesis is extremely overpowered, uh, this section will tell you. Yep. 
Unfortunately, this is the worst section, but it's at the end of the game. Yeah, this is the infamous escort mission, and there's no way of speeding it up or skipping it. No. People have tried. Blood has spent a lot of time trying to find uh, a way to do it. There's a funny uh, glitch where you can actually spawn a numerous amount of Little Sisters. Uh, but if you want to go into detail about it, well, we got time. Yeah, if the Little Sister dies um, and you have to get a new one, you can actually spam two of the, uh, the air vents they're supposed to come out of, and you'll get two. So every time you kill off one, you can summon two more. So if you just have a lot of time, <laughs> you can sit around and just summon a whole bunch like I, would, like I did one night. I think I got up to 20 before I got bored of it. It's a lot of little girls. So this place has been spying on either side. Typically they favor the right, but you always have to check the left just to be sure. Telekinesis is so strong. Now, in Bioshock 2, did, they did nerf telekinesis, correct? Yeah, in Bioshock 2, unfortunately, they did nerf telekinesis. It doesn't do nearly as much damage, and it uses a ton more Eve. So it's pretty much not used at all in Bioshock 2. The worst part about this stage is that the little sister is constantly yelling at you to go faster. <laughs> she taunts you every time. Yeah. She will continuously tell you to hurry up and move faster or do something. Once again, they can spawn on the right or the left side. Blood. Yep. Do the little sisters have a speed they can go at? They can either walk or they can run. If you know what you're doing, they, they will always run, but if you mess up one little thing, they'll walk, which is really slow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She'll constantly do it. That's just the dialogue she has. It's supposed to be mimicking the fact that you're a big daddy, and big daddies are very slow and cumbersome uh, protectors. That's the whole reason why she's saying that specifically, because big daddies are very slow. This is a part where we actually make her run. If you get out in front of her here, like that, she will now run for the rest of the mission, as long as you don't mess anything up. That's another strat, I don't know. Man, I am out of the loop. I'm bringing the gun turret with me because it's a very small object that will still do a one-shot kill. It's very, very important for this next little bit. So now we get three uh, splicers in the water, and if what you're throwing actually hits the water, it won't be a one-shot kill. If it hits the little sister, it won't be that either. If I used a body for that, then it probably wouldn't be a one-shot kill. I could use a camera or a trash can or something, but gun turret is probably the best. While the little sister runs up here, we're just going to make it safe. Yeah, there's a splice around here somewhere. And there's one over here on the floor. Unfortunately, with telekinesis, you can pick up random parts of the body um, that aren't actually the full corpse. So you can pick up mask, hooks, uh, other little things that won't be a one-shot kill. Like that. Picking up machine guns don't help. So this next part's what I like to refer to as the Kool-Aid Man fight, which is uh, 
Kool-Aid yeah. time. We'll see you in just a moment. And he's dead. That was a fast fight. So because we have a little bit of spare time with this run, I'm gonna go get her a present. I typically don't do this, but I think she deserves it. Her very own pet cat. Nice. It's very thoughtful of you. Yep. Just gotta make sure she takes it with her. Oh, nice guy. She will like to leave it behind, but... Oh, wow. I don't even know where it went. Oh, there you go. So if we hold it right here, she'll push it into the air vent. Oh. <laughs> and now oh. it's stuck there. Now it's spazzing. <laughs> and now we go to the final fight. A true boss fight. <laughs> And the best boss fight. Because pretty hard though. Yeah, yeah time's gonna be coming up pretty soon, so. Like another minute or so. I, when the crowd put you in I mean, this boss fight's gonna take me forever. It's difficult. I mean, I don't think you're ready. You are my ace in the hole, but you are also nah, this is no jokes. This is hard. This is really, really hard. proximity mines and when Fontaine jumps from his uh, chair he lands on the proximity mines says about 97% of his health uh, blood and loose. time Thunder about 54 minutes and 10 seconds, correct? Yep. And with and with loads or loading? Without loads, it's 52 20. Okay. It's a very hard time to beat, and this game is close to the point of being completely optimized. Yeah. Though I'm not sure with the new strat at Medical Pavilion or before it, if uh, how much that would save. So you guys donated for the good ending, and uh, here you go. So really it's so happy. Heartwarming ending. <laughs> Just a disclaimer, we saved no little Stay sisters during this run safety. the entire way. Just remember that. All right. We're back. <laughs> Everybody. Like how much time? <laughs> okay, we just gotta look casual. Nothing changed. Just don't even mention it. Nothing happened during the downtime. <laughs> Nothing at all. Blood got world record. Yeah. Everyone missed it. It wasn't recorded. It was insane. It's a one in a lifetime thing. If you had any wrong work the credits. We actually, we, we just tasked it, yeah. pretty much. Taskbot will be back here in a few moments. Speaking, do you want to mention, after the credits real quick, uh, Exploding Cabbage and all them? You probably should.
so fast you beat the game twice. And tie. <laughs> just a reminder, no little sisters were saved during this entire run. So just keep that in mind. Well, they are saved. No little sisters were high. They get saved in the ending. If that counts for anything. <laughs> So because everyone donated for the good ending, but I've come to expect it. It has to be happy. You saved them. You gave them the one thing that was stolen from them. A chance. <laughs> A chance to learn. To find love. To live. And in the end, what was your reward? You never said, but I think I know, a family. So I just want to give a quick shout out to Exploding Cabbage, who's the man who found practically all the glitches in this game, uh, or I guess we were calling it Easter eggs instead, but um, he really helped. Um, and shout outs to Cortez, who's actually doing a segmented run of this game currently, and that should be on SDA sometime soon whenever he submits it. So. If you want to see this game done really well, be sure to check that out. Yeah. Can we get a quick round of applause for those guys? They really deserve it. Just want to make a shout out to everyone who's donating. All of your donations go towards the Prevent Cancer Foundation. And I want to make another shout out to all of the sponsors. Our sponsors are the Yeti, uh, Twitch TV, and GameSpot. Can I, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear us? Sorry guys, no more speed. I need to speak louder. Okay. Yep, can you hear this? Clearly? <laughs> Quiet? Yeah. Higher? Even high? Wow, it's sensitive. Uh, something like that. Better volume. Should I, should I talk down to the mic? Or <laughs> 
Yeah, okay, okay. And I could probably try to speak up a little bit as well, conversate. Uh, aren't we supposed to be more people here? <laughs> uh, yeah, where's Jay? Yep, one of those are six, I think. You're coming in on the stream? The game coming in on the stream. Is the game coming in on the stream? Which one is this? Uh, this is six. Okay. Can somebody go find Honorable Jay? I don't know why he's not in here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. We have a $150 donation from Silos 911. Hey everyone, the yeah, marathon is awesome. Let's do a brightness <laughs> test real quick. <laughs> really looking forward to the Duke Nukem 3D run. Keep being great, everyone. I think I might need to that up just a hair. Supposed to be another one, or? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so it's somewhere. Uh oh. Ah, oh, damn it! <laughs> stupid, stupid video menu. Um, I went to adjust the brightness, and it changed the resolution at the same time. That's how. Why the hell not? <laughs> <laughs> okay, probably. Oh, well. It's over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's we're sitting like right under a a, a, a vent, I guess. Hey. Because it's like I feel like it's like 50 yeah, degrees much. in front of the seat. <laughs> okay. Hey, I'm a, I, Nice to meet you too. Okay, um, did the donation for the voice stuff get met? The Okay, I need to know what the ending will be in about 45 minutes, so cut it off. I'll tell you when to cut it off. What's winning right now? We have a $260 from Anonymous. Hey guys, French community is still there. Okay. Good work and good luck to all of you. Yeah. Here's a $20 donation from Anonymous again. Thanks for all the great runs. No, 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 no. Have you got a chance to donate? Uh, yeah, go ahead and get rid of this, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no. Here's a $15 donation from okay. Navicac. Good luck with Deus Ex, Uranium Anchor. All right. I know. Yeah, it's like it's 50 degrees in front of this seat, too, because <laughs> I have to put my coat on. Um, okay. Are we ready? Am I, I live? I not do anything embarrassing. <laughs> okay. All right. So before I start this run, just want to give uh, What? I got uh, mic seven. Yeah, yeah, seven. Wait, so am I live or not? Okay, all right. Okay, so only seven. Okay, and these guys are live? Yeah. Okay, all right, so I can start, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> testing, te testing, oh. testing. Yeah, more. Give me one more. Testing. Okay. Seven. I have my magic. I don't know why. Can you just put the mic like, like on your collar? Yeah, it, it should be, yeah, it should be up on your collar. Okay. Eh, eh, what are you doing? <laughs> She's choking you. Yeah, or that's what she seems like. <laughs> She's How did Deus Ex and choking have a comment? Don't worry about it. Okay. I mean, I guess there's gas grenades. I guess you could be choking on a gas grenade. I can't. Okay, you're going to see someone get up and just 
Can I move? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm coming through? Good. All right. Uh, a couple quick things before I start that I wanted to go over. I um, wanted to give a shout out to uh, Dex in particular for, uh, he's one of our staff members on SDA. He is the one who did the original segmented run of this game back in like 2006. There have been a whole bunch of new uh, discovery since then. That said, this run will still be significantly slower than his just because he does a bunch of stuff in that segmented run that's uh, really dangerous. And plus, I've got some donation incentives that'll slow me down. So um, that's, uh, that's still going to be, you know, that's still going to slow me down. Um, before I start, I wanted to uh, explain my choices here. Uh, the heavy weapons, I need to put two points into heavy weapons because that means that I don't, that I'll run at full speed even with a heavy weapon out. And I need to max swimming at some point because there really aren't that many other many places to put points other than swimming and heavy weapons and maybe a little bit into lock picking later on. Uh, and there's a couple of really long water sections that putting more points into swimming can speed up significantly. So that's the, that explains my skill choices. Um, I think that's really all about I need to explain at the start. Although, well, okay, there's one trick that can really troll me. So hopefully I might have to call a mulligan if it goes wrong, but Cross my fingers. Uh, so I think we're ready to go if you guys are. All right. Three, two, one, go. You're a queen. Oh, whoops. I forgot about that intro. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Two seconds long. Three seconds. So, GC, <laughs> your brother Paul is on his way to meet you at the dock. The NSF is so first thing is I need to make sure that I get the GEP gun from Paul because it's pretty hard to find a GEP gun early on. Remember? Never know. Um, and the rifle and the mini crossbow are useless in a speed run something these days. Your orders are to shoot uh, so normally you're supposed to have to go to the top of this statue and capture the commander, but I know the secret knock. It involves a special gas grenade. And this is pretty precise, so hopefully I get it right on the first try. Remember the Academy stealth course. Stay out of their field of view, walk slowly to stay behind cover. Yeah, I think that's good. Mm, maybe not. I think, there we go. Okay. Oh. <laughs> it's Denton. Let him in, quick. There's one. Come on, get open the door. What are you doing? Open the door. <laughs> Damn you. Deus Ex troll percentage. Oh my God. I hear you just slipped by a lot of the terror. Yes, I did, and you should open the door for me. Thank you. God go. damn you! <laughs> How to move NPCs, shoot them in the head. Apparently that's a good helmet he's wearing. Yeah, that, that probably took about 30 seconds longer than it should have, but it opened the door, so good enough, I guess. So I need to do three things, or four things actually. I need to go grab a bio cell for later. I need to talk to Carter and Jaime Reyes. And then I need to talk to Manderly for my mission briefing. I need this bio cell for later because there's a, a glitch that I'll need to do. Uh, you can actually get either a multi-tool or some ammo from Carter, but I actually need the lockpick, and the lockpick is the default choice, so that really, uh, the fact that I can just hold the button speeds things up a bit. I need to get that key because I need to open the closet. Because I need to get this med kit. Hopefully I won't need it, but there are a couple things can go wrong in the beginning of the second mission. So I need to make sure I have a couple that of med kits. Hint, no flashlight. <laughs> yeah, well that has nothing to do with med kits, but yeah, no flashlight. Yeah, flat the, yeah. It's not worth explaining. What's that? Yeah, we'll explain later when we get to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, feel free, because I, I think uh, I think that particular part I don't necessarily have a lot to explain. Day. Get out of my way! <laughs> I swear, we got rain NPCs in here. Okay, so I'm gonna throw away the stealth pistol for two reasons: a, it's useless, and b, it gets uh, clutters up my inventory, and will screw me up later. As if the NPCs won't already. Yep. 
Okay, so if it's not immediately obvious, um, he's going for a heavy build, which means he's going to be using predominantly the heavy weapons like the rocket launchers and the flamethrower. Yeah, I don't care about my friend there fighting the NSF terrorists. I'm in too much of a hurry. Mm -hmm. You're speedrunning. You don't have friends. <laughs> not in this game, anyway. Well, I shot one of them in the face, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, it's a couple of shots between friends. Let's head out. So, fun fact, there was a, an early pirated version of this game would actually glitch out here because that sound clip wasn't in the game. And so, one way you could tell if people had pirated the game is, um, like, how do I get on the boat? Because for whatever reason, the sound clip not playing would make the, uh, the level not end. Don't get quick save. Oh, yeah. I don't think I really need it here, but who knows. Famous last words. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Remind me to quick save if I don't, because a lot of shit can go wrong in a, in a big hurry. Well, just kick your chair. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I don't care about this firefight either. And fastest way to clear out the subway is liberal use of explosives. Yes. Denton really doesn't care about human life, apparently. Yeah, there were some hostages there, but they're kind of a smear on the wall now. <laughs> it's faster just to do that. And then the funny thing is, the uh, NPCs here are still dislike. scared of you, even though they were not at the explosion at all. Yep. So, I want to grab these gas grenades from the soldiers over here, because they'll be useful for a geometry skip later. I apologize for the beeping, by the way. That might pop up sometimes. NPCs will not stop getting in my way, I swear. Okay. Take him out. Yes, you are hit. <laughs> oh. Yeah, some of the dialogue in this game is priceless. And especially, oh, I'm about to pick up the best weapon in the game right here. Flamethrower. Flame on! Okay, so I haven't taken any leg damage, so I don't really need the med kits. Um, I'm picking up sonic transducer activity. This is actually one of the games no where if you take damage to specific body parts, it will... Uh, slow you down like if you take leg damage you won't move as fast as yeah so I need to have like a reasonable amount of leg health there or I won't be able to jump over that fence um, this is actually a slight deviation from my previous route but I think it's a bit more reliable oh because I want to have flamethrower not rockets yes the flamethrower okay so the flamethrower oh. is seriously the best weapon in the game because for some reason even though a lot of the death screams in this game are um, pretty similar like almost every model in the game has uh, has its own unique uh, "I'm on fire, oh God, help me!" scream. <laughs> and and it's hilarious as the game gets on. Yeah. Oh, dang it! Okay, my I missed through that grenade slightly, so I need to grab a couple more because I need to open. This is very very important that I open this safe here. That's where you don't get caught in the blast. Yeah, that would have been that would have been bad. Okay, so this is a speed augmentation. And there uh -oh. are so many guys. <laughs> that is why the flamethrower is awesome. <laughs> so I need to have that speed augmentation because it's really key once I actually install it. Um, it I mean, it makes run. you run fast. How, what more could you want for a speed run? It also makes you jump higher. And these ladders can be kind of weird sometimes, but they seem to be cooperating. Mostly. Okay. Hopefully this guy doesn't shoot me, so I'm going to quick save just in case. He tried. I don't think he actually hit me. Fortunately, the helicopter, the helicopter cutscenes I can't skip, and there's a fair Welcome number of back. them. But Your mission was a success. Just about the only bright side I need to do two things here. I need to... Actually, well, to technically three things, I guess. I need to run over to Mandarzuli's office so that I can trigger a conversation to Maybe make somebody walk out of the office, box. because otherwise he'll be in my way, uh, and the door won't open. And then I need to run downstairs and install the speed augmentation, and then I need to run back up I to Mandarzuli's office to actually talk to Mandarzuli. Okay, Just that's the conversation I need to trigger. Now, as soon as I walk away, the conversation will end prematurely, and the guy in there will leave the office and let Never me inside. Mind Anna Navarra. She hates everybody. But I need to run down to the medic. While that's happening, I need to run down here and install the speed augmentation. I have an AUG upgrade, so that will also 
make me run fast. There we go. Now he gets to move. Yeah. So I'll basically leave this on for the entire rest of the run. Oh, god damn. It's an early 2000s. It's an early 2000s shooter. The physics are a bit primitive. Non playable plants. Hope this one turns out a little better. So now I just run back outside and go in the helicopter. Your chopper's ready, Agent. You may use the helicopter, Mr. Tech. Everybody in the world is trying to talk to me, and I just don't care. <laughs> okay, so in about 30 seconds, I'm going to show off a glitch that was discovered sometime in the last six months. I'm not sure precisely when it was discovered, but it makes a huge difference in a speedrun because it removes a lot of the item planning. That's, uh, that was necessary in Index's old segmented run. So, it's, oh. okay. So if I bind item pickup to the mouse wheel and just spam the mouse wheel while dropping items, it will duplicate items. If you notice, I now have 30 bio cells when I had two before. And now I've got 11 med kits when I also had two before. So that means I don't have to worry about making sure I pick up enough bio cells. It also means I don't have to worry about uh, preserving my bio cell energy to any significant degree because if it gets low, I can just duplicate more bio cells. Homeless drifted down here. Junkies, runaways, grifters. There's a DSS file it also file works on place. weapons and grenades, but it's a bit trickier in both of those cases. Yeah, it works on like the flamethrower and the gep gun if you already have one in your inventory. See, that's that's actually one of the key factors. You need at least um, one or two in your in for items. You need at least two like bio cells. Same thing with health, oh, with health packs, but for the oh, weapons you can do, oh, you only need one. Yeah. Ah, shoot. I woke up the terrorists. Uh -oh. Dang it. It's not a big deal, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I need to. Oh, okay. Nope, come on. I need to make sure. Why? Okay, this was working perfectly fine in practice before. No, come yeah, on. You didn't break my mouse, did you? I hope not. <laughs> I need to have, you know what, screw it. I think I think that's still enough. What do you get, three? I got three. I want, ideally I want four, but I think I can still do it with three. But So what I did there was I duplicated the flamethrower and got a whole bunch of flamethrower ammo, which means I basically get to use the flamethrower for the rest of the game without having to worry too much about ammo. Yeah, and all that popcorn sound, flight. that's just the people running away. Yeah, I scared absolutely everybody down here, so now they're all running around like chickens with their heads cut off. So, this part isn't terribly interesting, although the jumping is kind of tricky. Gonna save here? Yeah, yeah. this <laughs> jump can be kind of annoying. Sometimes you'll get shot and not get knocked into the water. And that joke about the flashlight before, um, if you can't see in this area and you turn the flashlight on, it actually alerts those robots and they will crush you before you get halfway across that room. Yeah, I, just, I was wondering why the hell I was having so much trouble all of a sudden one time. Okay, this throw's kind of tricky. I think I got it. Yep, lambs, the new keys. Yeah, who needs, who needs lock picks when you have grenades? These are awesome. Okay, so now I've got... Three points in my leg upgrade. I need to have. That. I need that law for like for later. Right yeah, the law has its own interesting flavor. Oh, what? Come on. See if you find the other two. They found us. The screams are so good. <laughs> oh, the best part is if he actually gets to show you them running around on fire. That's even better. <laughs> Okay, so J.C. Denton uh, apparently thought that his leg aug wasn't good enough, so he uh, hacked the debug menu in it and unlocked a secret feature. This is the terminal at LaGuardia, owned by Juan Ivanovich Lebedev. 
So you want to explain that? Yeah, so um, anytime you turn the speed dog on or transition a map with the speed dog on, the game will, uh, it'll apply the augmentation bonus to your stats, but when you go far enough in the menu with it already on and then back out of the menu, the game reapplies it without setting you back to default, so it just it, it exponentially increases every time you go in the menu. Okay, so this is a fun bug with the law. If I leave the map while the animation is still playing, it will give me another shot. And it's faster than, whoops, what did I do? It's faster than doing this normally, assuming that I actually get the shot. This mouse is really sensitive. Okay, yep, that so I need to kill. <laughs> Paul talks to me and then immediately disappears. Sometimes oh, that says, happens. Excellent work. <laughs> yes, he, he's, very, he's very accurate. Um, Anyway, uh, so I needed to kill Lebedev to trigger Anna to show up in the map, and then I need to kill Anna because I don't want her to be around because she she uh, she gets in my way later. So it's good to kill her now. Another interesting aspect of that is none of the NPCs know that he killed Agent Navara, even though he clearly shot her because the flag that says you killed Navara is in that room where Lebedev is. So because he killed her from the entrance to the plane rather than in that room, no one knows what's going on. None the wiser. Yep. Norm normally the, all the NPCs are like, what the hell happened to Anna in there? And you have to act all stupid like, oh, I didn't shoot her. Looks like there was, oh, they had a lot of heavy resistance, sir. <laughs> I yeah. think that's what he says. Manderley wants to see you. You know the drill. Okay, uh, this time I don't have to do anything other than talk to Manderley and then immediately leave. Oops. No. Good. Uh, yeah, I think now's a good time. All right. Uh, we have fifty dollars from Iceman. Uh, think those MJ12 scum. You going to anchor? Lost my dad to lung cancer in eleven. Thanks to SDA and all involved for your hard work. Donate to go to UA's choice. Uh. My order. I'll have to think about that. All right, there's a couple, so... Uh, well, what, what's some that are coming up? What's a, what's a challenge that's coming up? Yeah, Doom versus... Uh, no, a challenge, not a bid. Or, uh, yeah. If, oh, is that uh, the, the secret map in Doom 2 met not? Is that met yet? Okay, then go, then put in towards that. All right, so secret map then. All right, so another 50 towards you, which I assume is going to be that as well, if the audience does the wave. Is this... Okay, so here's my last leg augmentation. Send it back. Woo! Love the enthusiasm. But that was, yep, that's a total of 100 towards. <laughs> 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 this is this isn't a money farm. <laughs> yeah. It's a glitch. <laughs> Sorry, or an Easter egg. <laughs> so another, so thi another thing. Uranium anchor hype from the SA ah, speed run. No, oh. I hit the I hit the display <laughs> menu. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, can you pause the timer for a sec? New resolution go. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> PG-13 here, buddy. Everybody gets one. Oh, OK. <laughs> OK, all right, let's try that again. Anyway, that, that's the, the wave 50 was from Kiro, if I'm pronouncing that correct. You'll need to send the signal from the satellite dish on the top of the warehouse. If you're unable to hack they the computers up there, from Utai Mitsumu watched quite a few speedruns on YouTube of AGDQ 2013. Glad I get to catch it live for the first time. Raising money for a great cause. Lost a good friend to cancer, and my dad is now in cancer, cancer free himself. Let's keep, game, go, uh, let's keep going, gamers. So one, one other thing we didn't explain before is that the, uh, the moon jump, okay, or super jump, so to speak, uh, also w works in reverse. So it will uh, reduce your fall damage, so that's why you could survive uh, that jump down the building. Yeah, normally that fall would kill me.
It's faster to just jump over this building rather than try to worry about getting into the ladder. Or it's at least more reliable. Okay, so I need to quick save here in case I screw this up. Uh, Paul? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello, Paul. <laughs> the final boss shows his um, true form. Uh, go out what? the window, go out the window and back again. What the hell? He's not talking to me? <laughs> Apparently you didn't send the message correctly. I forgot to put the with love from Paul on it. Nope. Try, try loading um, again, see if that works. Uh, this is a real problem. What the fuck, Paul? Your buddy there he goes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Apparently he didn't like my rocket launcher. Anyway, that's faster. <laughs> um, crap. Uh, oh, that, uh, that sucks. I'll hold him off. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so if I open the inventory screen fast enough, um, it's still not letting me drop the gap gun. God, what the heck? It's because you have it equipped, probably. I'll hold him off. Yeah, what um, job to do? Yeah, I do have a job to do. Okay, let's try this again. Why is it not letting me drop this damn thing? What's going on here? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. There we go. There we go. Okay, so um, I, if I open the inventory menu and drop all my stuff on the ground, normally it takes this all away from me, but I can make a nice stack and I get to keep it. I need you to escape. So I, I need to wait for this door to open anyway. Uh, but I want to fix my inventory. Yeah, so this skips him having to f actually find all of his equipment, and he can just run right for the exit. Yeah. Plus, another interesting thing about this game, um, all the keypads in the game, uh, except for, I think, one, all the keypads are, are fully active. So once you play the game once, you can just look up the code online. You don't even have to do the mission where you're supposed to get the code. You can just run for the door. Yeah, Hello? so normally I'm supposed to have to go rescue Paul from the lab. Um, before I leave, but I know I know the code, so I can just leave. Bye. Is that you? You must And somehow Paul figures out his own way to get out. You know. Yeah. It's a man with a flamethrower. Back up. Okay. So since the Gunther kill phrase, um, need to make sure. Stay here. I need to make sure that Jaime stays here, otherwise I can't get Gunther's kill phrase. I'm going to... where's... there he is. I'm going to install the regen augmentation while I'm here. So that'll be useful later. I need to talk to Alex to get the key. Hello. To leave. Uh, one reason why I need to kill Anna is he won't give me the key unless Anna is dead. If Anna is not dead, General, she will be standing near next to a door that I need to open. Yeah, then you either have to fight her or find her kill phrase. Time for duping. Yep, good enough. As long as I get 16. Good enough. No doubt. You've still got to break out of HQ. Door, please. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Stand where I can see you. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see Somebody you. escaping with a flamethrower. Pay him no mind. Oh, yeah. And of course, the security camera doesn't flag you as being an enemy. That's see. really funny. Oh, I need to install this uh, augmentation. Upgrade in regen before I leave. I don't need to do that, but it's in my inventory. I might as well get rid of it. Nazi killing of Agent Kamal. How do you deal? Are we going we to get all the yeti. voice acting? Uh, is that met? Yeah, yeah. The voice, all the the extra scenes have been met, so, so I'll be I'll be doing those. Those aren't for a while yet, though. This has inspired our next donation. Put all two thousand onto save the animals. Love the yeti. To the Yeti. Might want to shoot what the heck? <laughs> Get in the vent. Thank you. I, must, I missed it by like two inches, I guess. Yeah, so here's okay. another sequence break. Yeah, it's not terribly big, but... Oh, nice. First try. That's actually really hard. Yeah, technically you're supposed to exit through there. You're not supposed to get in from there. But moon jumping is a... a nice thing. <laughs> That's new one. So sometimes that electricity can kill me in like half a second. It's really annoying because if it hits me in the head twice in a row, I'm dead no matter what. 
Uh, the blue flashing on the screen is me re reactivating regeneration, by the way. And I'm gonna break this mission over my knee. <laughs> like Bane with Batman. So, you're not supposed to come through here until about halfway through this mission, but, um, like I said, if you know the codes, you can go anywhere you like. Yeah, most but, of the dialogue in this game is designed to cover nearly every scenario, so that the, it kind of makes sense, even if you do things like wildly out of order. But the way he's doing it now, the, the developers just didn't care to even cover this one. Yeah. This is about where they gave up. If you break into this early, earlier than you're supposed to be in here, they pretty much just give up. Okay, so since I need to kill this guy for his rocket ammo. So now we just get a voice transmission from Tracy Tong, although we haven't met him yet. So, uh, yeah, talking like best buds already. Yeah, yep. sequence breaks. They're awesome. Yeah, they always drop the same thing. So I need to wait for these doors to open, so it's a good time to duplicate some bio cells. Looks like he's throwing them up. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's like the it's like a la carte and fast food. Okay, so this part can be a little difficult, so I'm going to quick save just in case I screw this up. Oh, wow, okay. Wow. <laughs> I haven't hit the lasers in a while. So, there's an alarm panel on this wall. Okay, that went perfectly. There was an alarm panel on that wall. I need to make sure to hit the alarm panel, otherwise the scientist will hit it and wake up those bots. And ideally, I also want to kill the soldier there in the same shot, because the soldier will shoot me in the head and kill me very fast if I'm trying to hack the computer while he's standing there. So, this is the power recirculator. Oh, well, this is the power recirculator, um, which will become very useful because it means I have to use less bio cells. But, let's see. And now you get to see Maggie Chow for the first and only time in the game. Yep. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, so she's actually a bad guy, but you don't necessarily know that. Uh, and I just did a duplication or uh, an inventory glitch where if you drag an item off of the grid, I'm oh, sorry, I need to upgrade swimming. Now I got master swimming. Anyway, if I drag an item off the inventory grid and then close the inventory screen while it's still off the grid, it will think I d that space is open. So if you look, the sword is actually occupying the same space as my rocket launcher. So that's good to have because otherwise I wouldn't have enough room for everything I need to carry around with this build. The only problem is if it's not hot on your hot bar, good luck at, uh, accessing it without dropping everything and starting over. Yeah, pretty much. Um, that's why I had to make sure to delete the augmentation upgrade that ended up in my hot bar so that the sword would end up in slot 5. Because this sword is ridiculous. Um, it can basically one or two shot pretty much anything that's not a robot. The boat. The boat. Go the boat. What? No, kill the boat. You're supposed to kill a boat with the sword. Oh, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, so... Gentlemen, can I take your ammo, please? Thank you. Yep. So... That would be all. Don't want to talk to this guy, so I'm going to light him on fire. And she's got a great scream, so I have to light her on fire, too. And now I'm going to jump all the way to the top of this building. Whoops. Wow, I ran out of... Ran out of bio energy and almost died. Oh man! <laughs> you broke your so, legs. So yeah, I broke my legs, and I got away from my legs to heal. I wasn't paying attention to my bio energy. That kind of sucks. Um. So I'm gonna kill everybody in here. And you ran out of flamethrower. Yeah, well, oh, I need boy. to pay better attention because I need to open this case. Because if I don't open that case, it's a plot trigger. So I need to redo the uh, super jump glitch because my I ran out of energy. Otherwise, this fall would kill me. So I need to make sure that that conversation triggers before I leave the map. Otherwise, because that's a plot, important plot trigger. Now, normally I would have to now run to the Lucky Money and talk to Max Chen to get into the Luminous Path compound. But little known fact is that he's got a secret treehouse in the Wan Chai Market, which I'm now about to go visit. Hello, Mike Scan. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I found something in Miss Chow's apartment that might interest you. He's not Seoul. 
a high-tech sword that obviously belongs to one of the triads. I have it right here. The dragon's tooth? It belongs to the Red Arrow. You must have gotten it from the Romulus Pact. They were the ones. I'm afraid you've been betrayed. Oh, there must be an explanation. Perhaps you should meet with the leaders of Luminous Path. Hmm, perhaps. For now, take down this message. I will stop hostilities until I have completed an investigation. My men tell me that Gordon Quick still stands outside the Luminous Path compound near Wan Chai Market. What is it? MJ-12 troops. They must have followed me. <laughs> if they can follow me up here, they are welcome to have the sword back. <laughs> so, um, that conversation is slightly glitched. Uh, and this kid is a jerk, so he's gonna die. <laughs> um, anyway, that conversation is slightly glitched because you're supposed to have it in Max Chen's office, and there's supposed to be a guard standing next to him that uh, is telling him that the uh, troops are attacking the club. But since I'm not actually in the club, the game is a little confused. It displays the text, but it doesn't display the guard's name, and it doesn't actually play the sound clip. He's on but, cell phone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's still, he, yeah, he's letting Max Chen know that uh, the club is under attack. Okay, this, I need to be careful. I need to make sure to trigger this conversation the right way. If I get too close to him before I actually talk to him with the right mouse button, then it will uh, trigger the wrong conversation. Oops. No, install. <coughs> Um, it will trigger the wrong conversation and waste a ton of time. So now I have the power circulator, which is really nice because it uh, vastly decreases the amount of energy that my augmentations yeah. will use, which means I have to pay less attention to my energy bar, which is nice. So I, that was the, conver the conversation I had as I was coming in is the conversation that actually ends the mission. So now Jock is waiting outside, and now I can leave. Max Chan and technically, even though he can jump into the compound early, if he does, no one's in the basement for him to talk to, and everyone here tries to kill you. So he actually has to do everything before he entered the compound. Yeah, and the keypad, the key code won't work. It's like the one key in the game where the code won't work unless you actually know the key. So this is the last time I come to Hell's Kitchen. I need to talk to Stanton Dowd about the freighter full of scary know? nanovirus. Is it okay to read some donations? Uh, yeah, I guess so. All right, uh, we have $200 from Jade Spider. I first saw the AGDQ 2013 run on YouTube, and now I get to watch it live. I keep trying to pause and pause the stream to go to the bathroom for a snack, because I miss, because I don't want to miss a moment. <laughs> Also, there should be an incentive to save Paul if he's not being saved already. Well, you save him by not jumping out the window. As long as if you, if you, the thing that trick that kills him is if you jump out the window. He's alive at any, no matter what you do otherwise. Uh, $50 from an anonymous donator. Great work, guys. This event is one of the highlights of my year. Keep raising money for a great cause. Uh, $10 from Taizu. It's dangerous to go alone against cancer. Take this. Put these $10 to, towards saving Merrill in the Metal Gear Solid. Also, we all need, also, as we all need love. Also, shout out to Plexel, the donation station, and also to Uranium Anchor. Good luck with your run. And finally, rip my sleep schedule, watching as much as I can. Because I need to blow up this fan blade. <laughs> Sometimes the grenades are a little finicky. Um, so that fan blade will kill me if I don't blow it up. Or, well, it has a very high chance of killing me anyway. So now I need to break into this ship. I need to break into this ship and, uh... The whole point is to sink the ship yeah. by destroying a couple of, uh, weld points and then reverse into build pumps. It's just a bunch of running around and blowing stuff up for fun. Yeah, pretty much. And he also gets to demonstrate another lovely little uh, glitch with the law. Yes. Um, I'll let him get to it before I actually explain what's going on with it. Plus, I don't want to distract from all the people on fire. Yeah. <laughs> fire percent run. Okay, so that was one of the weld points. I, you can't actually see it, but if you shoot the wall just above it, it'll still blow up. Oh, 
Burn, baby, burn. Okay, so here, control computer. Well, point number two. So strictly speaking, I don't have to go up here. Oops, I don't have to go up here necessarily. But come on, get up there. Um, but the cloak augmentation is up here, which is really useful if um, for two of the endings. So I'm going to grab it. But there's a there he is. Okay, there's a guy. I knew there was a guy up here, and I wasn't sure where he was. So here's the cloak augmentation. Some more gef ammo in case I need it, although I don't think I do. If you stand right next to thin windows, you can shoot the law through the window because for whatever reason it spawns slightly in front of you. And I managed to hit one of the third weld point by shooting it through the window there. Strictly speaking, it's faster to run into that room another direction, but then you can't get the cloak, um, which is kind of important for, like I said, two of the endings. So. Yeah, so killing two birds with one stone. And so now that I've blown up all five of the weld points, the ship is sinking and it's going to toss me all over the friggin' place. Um, before I leave, I need. To, this is the last time I'll see a med bot, so I need to install cloak before I leave. Okay. okay I need to wait because this can really troll me. I can't quick save during while people are talking to me on the communicator. Hopefully this doesn't knock me off. Okay, if the game decides it wants to shake any time during that jump, it will knock me off that ledge and I will fall down. So I didn't want that to happen, so I waited until I could quick save, just in case it went wrong. And now I can leave. Okay, so next uh, I'm gonna be at the graveyard. Normally you're supposed to um, have the gatekeeper let you in, but you can just jump over the gate. I need to shoot a rocket at that wall because it's got a transmitter in it that prevents drop from landing. But since I already destroyed the transmitter, if I do this fast enough, there will actually be two helicopters because Jock somehow managed to duplicate himself. <laughs> so it's probably the fastest map in this run. I just love how the guards are standing there like, hmm, you guys hear something? <laughs> However, this cut this cut scene right here probably takes longer than actually doing the map. Because even though there's guards all around, Jock is like, I'm just going to fly away slowly. There's no danger. Well, technically, they're all supposed to be dead. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. OK, so me too. normally you can't survive this fall. Um, but with the super jump glitch, I can. So that skips a good portion of this mission. Uh, alternately, you can also ride a grenade down, but that's a bit less reliable. So um, super jump it is. This part's really annoying right here because I'm basically going to have Tracer Tong yapping in my ear the entire time, so I can't quick save during any of this. First thing I need to do is kneecap this guy, makes him run away. Oh. Nope. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Yet. There we go. Okay. Okay, so that guy running away opened this door. Now that he's opened the door, I can kill him. Thanks for your assistance. Now I'm going to activate cloak because running through this area with cloak on makes it way, way easier. Yeah, you can't really tell that he's got cloak on unless you actually see the icon. Yeah. Because the guards aren't really all that much stupider even when I have cloak on. Uh, tur the turrets can still hit see me. But they have terrible aim, so I'm not terribly worried about them. I do have to keep a close eye on my en energy, though, because Cloak sucks a lot of energy. Um, but that's why the duplication bug exists. I apologize if the alarms are loud on the stream. I can't really do much about that. OK, now I can turn Cloak off. Oh, wow, I've got way more, way fewer bio cells than I usually do. I need to be careful not to use too many up, because I need to have at least two to duplicate. Although I do know where I can pick up one if I accidentally screw up. So I need to do two things in this area. I need to go talk to Nicolette in the club. 
Uh, the club has a cover charge, but there's a back door. It's much easier to just blow the door open. And the guard here does not care that I have a rocket launcher, even though he asks me to keep my weapons concealed. Everybody else gets scared of my rocket launcher, but the guard does not care. And this jump can be kind of annoying. There we go. Oh, no. Oh, great. <laughs> now the person I need to talk to is running away from me. Because I took too long jumping up there, and she got scared by what something. I don't know what. Come on. Stop running. <laughs> talk to me. Come on. Come on. I'm not going to hurt you. Get back here. What are you? No, not you. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and now she's scared again. Okay, sure, what, whatever. I talked to her. That was good enough. Your voice is scary. Okay, I have, I'm really low on bio cells, so I'm going to duplicate some. Okay. Oh, wow, it's dark in here. Okay, there we go. Hard to tell where I was. Okay, so I need to make sure to talk to Jaime before I leave to get the kill phrase, which involves running past this bot with a really bad vision cone. Okay, so now I know Gunther's kill phrase, which is one of the donation incentives you guys donated for. I <laughs> I'm not sure why Gunther is running into the camera here, but for some reason I guess they wanted you to know he was in Paris and somehow just missed you or something, I don't know. Um, so there's a lot of locked doors in this. It's not funny. You're right, it's not funny. Uh, there's a lot of locked doors in this house and rockets are the best keys, so. You're just remodeling, that's it. Yep. <laughs> Okay, this door takes forever to open, so I'm going to take the opportunity to duplicate some bio cells while I have the chance. Hopefully that'll be enough and I won't have to duplicate any more. So I need to grab this lock because I need it for a very important trick shot later. I'm going to grab this augmentation upgrade for power circulator, which means my stuff uses even less power now. And I need to use this computer to talk to Morgan Everett. Ah, gotta wait. The, uh, com the conversation didn't trigger. Gotta wait to make sure that the right one triggers, otherwise it won't be able to leave the map. Okay, all right, now I can leave. I just wanted to make sure that that triggered before I talked to Nicolette again. Great camera angle there. Oh. Get out of my way. Sometimes she blocks me, sometimes she doesn't. So cool. Yeah. Now apparently she's invincible, but uh, if you hit her twice, she gets all aggro on you and pulls out what, a shotgun? Yeah, she has a sawed off shotgun, and if you hit her too many times, she'll get very pissed at you and shoot you in the head. One time is okay, it's two times that's her limit, apparently. Okay, so if I hadn't uh, waited for that, uh, if I hadn't waited for the communication from Morgan Everett, that door would not have been open. Nope. Stupid ladders are so hard, apparently. Well, when you're carrying a big rocket launcher, of course. Yeah, sure. So I can just run past these guys if I'm if I do it right. That one you don't want to just That guy I can't run past. So I have to kill him. And I just realized I didn't put to max out heavy weapons now. I forgot to put that after I talked to Nicolette. Whoever's out there is in serious trouble. So I need to jump to the top of this chapel. <laughs> Bust my way in again. And Gunther is hiding in this basement down here, so I need to make sure not to skip the conversation. Yes. Obey your new masters. Come to me. A uh, face only a mother can love. Do not forget that you left me a prisoner of the NSF. You came all the way to Paris to tell me that? It's a simple message I demonstrate. We know where you are going and what you intend. 
Yeah, they know something about you. You know who could want to be me. I know you're the Nazco kill phrase. The Putin machine. I have built a machine. Sticks and stones. Seizure time. And now he's going to shake a little while and then explode. Goodbye, Gunther. <laughs> so, normally I would just shoot that guy with a rocket and it's a lot faster, but I find that conversation amusing, so I made a donation incentive. I'm getting what I need. Good work. I will now consent to meet you in person. Go to the metro station. thought it would be a good choice because it takes some effort to set up, and it also means I have one less augmentation upgrade canister for later. So it does actually make this run slightly more difficult. So I'm about to do another glitch that's been known for quite some time and was in um, Dex's run in a slightly different form um, because he didn't think that this particular form he thought it would get you stuck out of bounds because we didn't know about the super jump at the time. Um, but there's a way to skip basically most of Morgan Everett's house by uh, the grenades in this game can push you through thin windows and doors. So I'm going to be using a grenade in a second here to force myself through this window. Hopefully it works on the first try. Yes, I did, and it didn't work. So let me try this again. Nope, all right. It's really finicky. Hopefully it works soon, though. There we go. And that is the strongest window in the game. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I caught Toby in that explosion and he died, but collateral damage. So this guy is also a jerk. He's going to die. I have to run down these stairs to trigger Jock, otherwise he won't actually be waiting up here. And here is the famous conversation everybody knows about. <laughs> <laughs> Something about that guy didn't smell right. You better double check your systems. What did he work on? The fuel system. Hmm. Now that you mention it, wait a minute. This isn't right. What is it? Oh my God, JC, a bomb. A bomb. <laughs> a bomb. Get out of there. Just have to pull this wire. There. Relax. I just okay. The so those were the two conversation incentives. I hope you guys were amused by them because the voice acting in this game can be pretty amazing sometimes. Get out of here. Let's go. And now we can leave. <laughs> I'm sure the Twitch chat just about melted there. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'm about to do another grenade clip here. It's one of these rooms down here. Normally you're supposed to have to like run through this base, kill a bunch of bots, and go get a key, but... Oh, shoot. It's pretty hard to see in here, so I'm going to turn the light on. Sometimes it pushes you into the wall and kills you. Smush. <laughs> Being really... Fit. There we go. Okay, so it pushed me through that fence. Now I can run down here and get the key to the command center. Technically, you can skip, you can clip yourself through the command center door, but it's actually really, really hard and not marathon safe at all, so. More collateral damage. All right, yeah, in a second here. Oops. Oh, no, get up there. What am I stuck on? There we go. Shoot. I'm going to save it just in case I die. That scientist over there was unfortunately in the way. Mm -hmm. But I needed to blow up those uh, TNT crates, otherwise it's a very high chance that I would get shot and blown up. So I need to talk to Savage to open this door. Jump up here. More plot triggers. And talking to this guy skips the next info link conversation. So now Savage will slowly walk over to this communicator, which gives me Another chance to duplicate bio cells. Okay, so I got 30, so it should be good. There you are. So then I need to I talk to him. Now he's begging me to go save his daughter who has been kidnapped. 
but we won't be doing that because it takes too long. JC saves no one but himself. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, so hopefully I can get out of here without angering this bot, although it's not a huge disaster if I don't. Okay, good. Sometimes, if you jump over him, then sometimes he won't get pissed off at you. And for some reason, this wall is just not tagged as solid, so you can just jump right through it. So I'm about to send Tracer Tong into a base that's still full of bots and soldiers, but I don't care. He can fend for himself. Come on, Jack, move it. No, the timer's moving. <laughs> yeah, the uh, helicopter cutscenes in this game are unfortunately not skippable, but they're also not too long, so it's not a big deal. And like I said a moment ago, hostage rescue is for suckers, so I will not be doing it. Instead, I will wake up the guards with a rocket shot and jump this fence. Jace, Jace and is hopefully next they will realize. So that one's pretty fast. The shot. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You surely did. So as soon as the guards kill Tiffany, the helicopter spawns. Uh, you're not normally supposed to be able to get in there before Tiffany's actually dead, but you can super jump over the fence. I love how Jacey just pushes off like, eh, I tried. <laughs> I gave it my best shot. Yeah. That's <laughs> literally what shot. he says. I gave it my best shot. And to be fair, I did. I just wasn't shooting for, you know, what they thought I was shooting for. Oh, whoops. So this is kind of this part's kind of annoying because I can't quick save for the first like 15 seconds of this mission because of the communication. And fortunately, there's a very good chance I could fall off and land in the water here. So I'm gonna wait until I can quick save just in case I screw this up. Come on. Hopefully, I won't screw it up, but you never know. Light this guy in fire so he doesn't snipe me. And then light this guy in fire so I can get his delicious flamethrower ammo. And it's a good time to read donations because most of the rest of this is just a bunch of running around. All right. Uh, let's see, we have $50 from P&M. Thanks for the entertaining stream. Keep up the good work. Uh, we have $50 from Echo the Blue Mage. For my grandma, she battled chest cancer for several years to the very end. Keep up. Keep it up, guys, for a world without cancer. $25.02 from Walkahol. Hi, everyone. Everyone's favorite nut here. Saving, or saying, I'm sorry. Put this money towards W Mom in honor of fellow 502 member Wintergreen. He's a really cool guy, and also 502 true. Also, keep up the good charity work. Okay, qu uh, quick thing. I needed to open that door because it will let me get out of this mission faster. Um, you'll see why in a few minutes. You can, that's all. You can keep going. All right. Uh, let's see. Ten dollars from Anonymous. Been watching HDQ on YouTube now. I'm watching it live, and it's one of the best games ever. Love the cause and how uranium looks like a 2K style cyberpunkish. <laughs> Kudos from frosty Soviet Russia. Dark Ages for the win. And to those wondering, yes, it did take me quite a while to remember all of these key codes and passwords. $300 from Jaxus. Please put this towards go to it for Final Doom. Also a challenge for Dime. If you can get 100% kills on go to, I will give $1,500 to spread amongst whatever bids you like. Consider my offer, then get to it. I would clap as well, but I'm busy <laughs> Someone might with the keyboard, go sorry. Yeah, we should let him know. Or just tell him last minute when he gets to the level. Oh, by the way, uh, <laughs> yeah. By the way, $1,500 rides on something. Um, so just a reminder, uh, I, there is a bid war for which of the three endings to this game I get. I'll be cutting that off probably about 10 minutes, I think. I don't remember exactly where I am. Um, yeah, which one's winning? Well, I don't need to know for a few minutes. Uh, I figured for the people who want to donate. Oh. The jump is actually kind of hard because if I hit the ceiling at the wrong angle, I will get launched backwards. I 
fingers are so cold right now, it's hard to type. I'm seriously sitting under an AC vent, it's like 50 degrees over here. Well, it was Illuminati before, Is it, did it switch? Okay, so this is why I needed to open the door earlier, because I'm going to do the third and final grenade clip in this game. Hopefully I get it right first try, but this is kind of, this one's pretty tricky too. They're all pretty annoying. Uh, I need to get up on the window, and this pillow has the worst physics. Yeah, quick save. Okay, cool, got a first try. So it pushed me through the window, and now I'm swimming through the ocean, you know, however, however deep I am and swam back to the beginning of this map and now I could just leave instead of having to run back through the base. Uh, otherwise I'd have to fight Walton Simons and a bunch of divers. So that saves a ton of time and it's just way easier. And the other reason I max swimming is because it's actually faster to just jump out through here and then swim back up. But it's also really dark in here so I like to see where I'm going. So if I hadn't maxed out swimming, this would probably take an extra like 10 or 15 seconds. You know, which isn't huge, but like I said earlier, there isn't, there aren't really that many other places I need to put points other than heavy weapons and lock picking. And even lock picking strictly isn't necessary. It just takes, it just makes something take longer. So I'm not gonna jump in the helicopter blades if I can help it. Helicopter blades are deadly. Yeah, they really did think of everything. <laughs> so, if you Whoops. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so if you jump away from Jock after he says let's go, it won't actually trigger the ending. Um, and I didn't hit anything on the keyboard as soon as I jumped because I knew, you know, if I there's a good chance I would land in the helicopter blades if I did that. <laughs> Which would have been that was not. Yeah, that would have been a disaster. Okay, so here is a really, really annoying shot with the law. Um, this one's kind of hard to explain, so I'm going to let Jay explain it okay, so Hopefully, uh, once I get it. Okay. I, I need serious time for a second here, because this is really hard. Hopefully I get it first try. Nah, I didn't get it. Okay. I didn't even hear the explosion. I was way off. Okay. And the stupid dog is biting me, and it's ma making it very hard to hear what's going on. Nope, okay, this, this shot is so annoying. Well, I'm having a lot more trouble than I usually do with this shot. Okay, I don't, nah, sorry, this is taking longer than it really should. Even if I screw this up for like three minutes, it's still faster, but hopefully that doesn't come to that. There we go, okay. Go ahead and explain the shot, because. Okay, so what you're normally supposed to do is you're supposed to do this annoying mission where you reprogram the missile, and then right at the end, you're told, oh, someone is interfering with the launch. It unlocks an area, there's a guy there, you have to incapacitate or kill him, and then you can continue on and exit the level. Well, by shooting the rocket directly down that shaft, it hits a ledge just behind the guy, and the explosion is so large, it kills him, and the game thinks, oh, he must have done everything else, so let's end the mission. Yeah, and the, the shot's really hard to make, because it's like a five-foot section of wall that you have to hit, and uh, I'm shoot it, the sh particular section of wall is about 200 feet down, so pretty irritating to actually yeah, especially when you can't see exactly where you're aiming down the shaft yeah using the shadows to line it up helps but it's still pretty tricky okay so I'm gonna need to cut off the ending bid war momentarily here uh, not yet but yeah get your donations in if you want to see another ending well they're not gonna see it they're not gonna hear us in time so oh because <laughs> of this because of the stream delay Okay, so go ahead and cut off the ending bid war because I need to. I'll need to know in about 30 seconds. Okay, so here is. Oops, here's a fun glitch with the lock pick. 
you start picking the lock and then open the inventory screen and just sit here, it will continue to pick the lock without actually consuming the lock for the lock pick. Uh, it takes about 15 seconds to open this door um, with one point in the lock picking. So I'm going to sit here for about 15 seconds and hopefully it will open by the time I'm done. But there's a lock pick behind me if, in case I screwed this up. Okay, good. So it's basically the only thing I need the lock pick for that I got at the very beginning of the game. And I don't use it until the very end. Go figure. Somebody uh, he's still got he's cloak on, cloak so these right guys now. can't see me. Yeah, you can't even tell that he's cloaked, but he is. Yeah, the only way you can tell I'm cloaked is the little icon in the upper right there. So the winning ending is Ascension. So but those guys are jerks, so they're going to die. Okay, um, so I need to know what ending I'm doing. Uh, it's Ascension with $320. Okay. The next so closest that's was the Lamont. Probably the longest of the three, but not by a whole lot. So. First thing I need to do, go talk to Helios. I would need to do this for both Illuminati and Ascension. That's actually the one I was hoping would win because it's my favorite from a story standpoint anyway. But, so there's a lot of running around. I, yeah, time to read some donations. All right. We have $15 from Tyler Erb. Greetings from Nova Scotia. I have been looking forward to Agent Q oh, for months. Wh whoops. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, you can get back. Can I make it back up? Oh, wow. I have not done that, like, ever. That's never happened before. Marathon. Oh, please get back up here. Shoot. Ah, uh, I don't even know where I am. Come on, um, Master Swimming. Okay, let's try that again, preferably without the jumping early off the ledge. Wow. <laughs> I have seriously never done that before, ever. Blame it on the cold hands. Yeah, I'm going to blame it on my cold hands. As I hit the space bar just a little too early, I was trying to skip the conversation, and I jumped off the ledge instead. All right, let's try that again. There we go. All right, continuing with the comment. Wish I was sitting there front and center. Finally got through to the donation page after constant F5ing. Good luck to LL Cool Dave on the, on the Duke run. Here's a small donation. I'm broke, otherwise I'd donate some more. Why would it trigger this one? Sometimes this one triggers when I get down here, and it wastes a bunch of time because I gotta wait for it to gotta wait for it to finish before the door will open. Okay, so now it will open the door. Soon. Thank you. Okay, there we go. We have ten dollars from Xenoxis. Sorry, I can't do more. Let's hope we can kill cancer like uranium anchor kills cards with a flamethrower. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really happy that uh, heavy weapons are the fastest way to run this game now because they're the best, the most fun. Oh, uh, loud noise incoming. For some reason, these doors are the loudest damn things in the entire game. We have $50 from Victor Hall who says, Onakto, quit screwing around. So hopefully this guy won't get in my way. Yes, those aliens are very deadly. Yeah, just standing there kills you very, very fast. Okay, so I, thankfully I discovered the key code to this keypad uh, about a week ago, so I don't have to do a very dangerous room that can randomly kill me. So I need to ignore Tracer Tom because he will be talking in my ear for the entire rest of this friggin' map. And as you can tell, the game is really good about stopping you from touching things you shouldn't. Yep. Okay, so now I can go back to Helios and get the Ascension ending. So normally you're supposed to have to go into the basement and uh, and uh, open a uh, open that door with a security security computer, but the keypad does in fact have a key code. It's just not documented in the game anywhere, but it still works. So. 
Now I need to get back up to Helios. Fastest way to do that. Who's there? Jump back up here. Uh, not in there, but that's not a... Other than not being able to see where I am, that's not a big deal. And Cloak is great, because it would if I didn't have Cloak, this ending would be a million times more difficult. Uh, oh. Yeah, and thermo-optic camo, that would Okay, so it's about to be time in about five seconds. And time. I've done what you asked. Now what? That's not too bad. Nice. <laughs> Who are you? We are Icarus. We are Icarus. The barriers between us have fallen, and we have become our own shadows. We can do more if we join with you. And if I do, what becomes of me? You will be who you will be. We are our choices. We can choose to move humanity away from it. Darkness. This is what I was made for, isn't it? This is why I exist. All right, let's do this. What's happening? Helios! Icarus! Don't leave me! All right. <laughs> All right. Okay, so that's the Ascension ending. There is one more thing I want to show off since I got pretty good time on my estimate, or uh, beat my estimate by a fair bit. Um, so there's a fun little glitch at the end of the warehouse where if you manage to trigger the Gunther conversation and the helicopter conversation at the same time, something pretty interesting will happen. Um, unfortunately, you have to anger Gunther to trigger it. Hopefully, he will switch to his flamethrower. Okay. Oh, I think he walked. Okay, he walked too far away, so I need to reload. Try this again. I need him to stand next to me with the flamethrower, or this won't work. No, stand next to me with the flamethrower. Come on, you jerk. So I, I, I made this save to make it so I didn't have to try to do this glitch on the fly. He's not cooperating. <coughs> Come on. I need you to stand over here. Turn the lights out. Light me on fire. There we go. Oh. And he ran away again. All right. Sorry. Hold on. Oh. OK. Let's, I will make this work, I swear. Come on. Okay, there now I need to wait for him to calm down, and I'll know he'll be calmed down because he'll put his weapon away. Uh, and you're invincible during cutscenes, so it doesn't matter that JC is on fire. <laughs> Takes about 20 seconds for him to calm down. Okay, so pay very close attention to what's happening here. Let's go. <laughs> yes, something went very, very wrong. <laughs> and that's Day Sex. Hope everybody enjoyed it. Right. I'm gonna keep this. I'm just gonna grab a drink because I'm up to the next one as well. Oh, you're on the couch for Duke? Yeah. 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 It's um, his room. Yeah, I may just uh, hang with you. Michael Richter was supposed to be, but he's stuck in snow, so we do need more people around the couch. I don't think we'll. Like that. No problem. I hope it should be the Well, yeah, it tends to do that. It also cries a lot. I went through three of those things.
Yeah, that's why I'm not getting a new one. It's still the best mouse I've ever used, but for me it was always yeah. the thumb one. Yeah. Yeah. Number six. They're still on four. Oh, there's more animals. Okay, can you hear me? All right. <laughs> so. All right, coming up, we have Duke Nukem 3D by LL Cool Dave. Uh, there's a donation incentive for uh, a Gleek exhibition, which is we at $915 out of 1500 So if you want to see the Gleek exhibition for Duke Nukem, you need to get those donations in. Uh, come on, Steam. Mm -hmm. We have $10 no, from Spike Steam Vegeta, who wants right to now. say, shout outs to UA, the undeniable MVP of the history of the GDQ marathons. <laughs> That's everyone in the room Thanks, give Tim. a big applause to the man himself, UA. Come on. Well, last year we crashed crash Chippen. I guess I crashed Steam now. Uh, the, this isn't working. We have $100 from W. Heiko. Greetings. Have to donate during one of my favorite games. Thanks for the marathon and for the cause. And because you saved so many animals during Sonic, we can kill some animals in Metroid. Okay. Just tell me when the windows properly crop. Go ahead. It's, it's pretty empty. Yeah. You can even grab a mic if you want to. Don't know if I'm going to use a good commentary, though. Yeah. Which number mic is this? This is going to be mic number seven. We have $50 from Creel. Keep up the good work. Hope to catch more of these in the future. Well, I'm, I'm pretty much ready when you guys are. <laughs> We're gonna do this well, again? Yeah, I gotta figure out how to get this thing back on. <laughs> that works. Yeah. Test it. Can you hear it? Okay, good. Okay, a video's properly set up? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Okay, then, three, two, one, go. So, welcome to Duke Newton 3D, the game where the physics are made up and walls don't matter. <laughs> So this game is pretty much entirely broken at this point. Come on. Like Especially right here, I can pretty much clip to the top of the level, grab a cat pack. Go ahead, finish the level. Yeah, pretty try not to blink. This is gonna go by really quick. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to do the glitch exhibition at the end, you have to get your donations in real quick because this one is going to be over very soon. Yes, we um, still need five hundred eighty-five dollars for that. Oh come on. 
There we go. You can pretty much just press the button to the wall. Doesn't care. Physics, whatever. <laughs> but there's a real downside to the physics in this game because you can pretty much get stuck in any wall. Like, it's very easy to flip out of bounds or tip to walls, get stuck, get killed. So this game pretty much chronicles uh, Duke's ongoing struggle with stairs, small ledgers, uneven ground, or pretty much any feature in the level geometry. And there's also something about aliens or so, which you can read up right here. <laughs> okay, got all that. Right, so that's the backstory of this game. Uh, but there's some actual part to that. The help screen is an actual part of the run. Because um, the, in the previous level, there's two, basically two exit triggers. The usual nuke button you have at the end of um, every single level. And you also are supposed to get captured at the end. But for some reason, the internal timer keeps running during the help screen, so you can buffer both exit level triggers to happen at the same time, which just, well, pushes you ahead by two levels, skipping an entire one. So it's really well designed. Put it shortly, we were supposed to be playing the third level, but we decided not to. Yeah, skip pretty much. Just Who cares? Um, the, the basic trick in this game is um, crouch jumping. Basically, um, if you crouch while in the air and jump as you land, uh, Duke Nukem clips into the floor. And if you do that on small ledges or like certain structures in the levels, you can pretty much clip into almost any wall. And then it's just a matter of having enough speed to get on the, out on the other side alive. Like you can pretty much clip through a lot of doors in this game, bypass and a ton of stuff. Um, for this boss fight, um, in theory, like according to the source code of the game, you should be dealing the most damage possible by hitting his feet, but for some reason that's not actually true. You deal more damage by shooting him in the head. No idea why. Of a stop dodging my rocket. There we go. So that's the first episode done. Oh. Lunar Apocalypse takes us to space, and surprise, there's aliens in space. Who would have guessed? So yeah, if you want to read off some donations, you've got about a minute before something interesting happens again. Well, we have $10 from Radman, who says, Hail to the king of speedruns, Duke Nukem. The entire FPS block is hype. Looks like I have another sleepless night ahead of me. Put this $10 to G. Simpson for the Ocarina of Time trial name in honor of my stepdad who beat cancer. Signed, Radman. Oh, come on. And we have $10 from Dutch Santa, who says, I have had several losses of loved ones to cancer. Please put this money towards Go To It for Final Game. We have $100 from Tron Paul. Much love from TF2 UGC Highlander Gold. Keep on, plus forwarding your games and killer killing cancer. Okay, so there's another interesting clip coming up because we have no idea why or how it actually works. <laughs> but basically, if you, if you float at the right height, I'm going to chat back here, oh, come on, there we go. And then slowly turn into the shaft, and you can just clip in. Nice. And that, that shaft is about the size of Duke's shoe, so... Uh, yeah. It's, it's pretty much the exact size where you don't get squished. Like, you can barely survive that. Also, I'm grabbing the shrink ray here, which is pretty much the best weapon in the game. As you can shrink any non-boss enemy, which I'm going to show off in the next two levels. So it's pretty much entirely broken outside of boss size. Yeah, these tricks work as Duke scares physics. It just lets him do what he wants. Yeah. Also, if you haven't been able to tell so far, the chat pack is an entirely broken like it's a design feed failure or feature, however you want to see it. Because you can bypass a lot of these levels in an intentional way and everywhere we can't actually get with the setback, well we just sit there. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. How hard is it to control this with the steroids? It's um you get used to it. Like this there's a mini battle lord, we just don't actually care. Just shrink him, squish him with your mighty foot. Which is pretty much one of the best features in any game ever, mighty foot. 
I prefer the original where you can kick with both feet and run. Yeah, in the original 1.3D release, with this awesome initial like version number to release a game under, um, you can kick both your left and right feet while running. Because, yeah, well, physics, Just do who cares? the can can. Because physics. <laughs> That's the best rush you've ever Here's another clip I don't fully understand. You can just slip right through there. But for some reason, it only works if you like stand on the actual grade when jumping. Like if you jump onto it from somewhere else, it doesn't work. No idea why. Also, a lot of triggers in this game um, are touch floor based. So look, right here, I just floated in on my chat pack and bypassed a trigger that spawns like four or five enemies. Also, the best way to refill health in this game is to just kill yourself at the end of a level. You have to keep all your items, but you spawn with full health in the next one. It's pretty useful on time. And we've got time for one more donation. All right, Maybe we have $52 hurry. from Dan C. All my cash goes to Robo to be named Ryan D. in honor of the late, great Ryan Tassel Davis. The world is a lesser place without him. He brought so much love and laughter into countless lives. Let's work to save lives in the future. Well, this is probably one of the most RNG heavy parts of the run, just because you have to dodge all of these enemies somehow. Okay, and that went pretty well. I have been stuck there for 10, 15 seconds before. All right, we're up to $1,100 for the glitch exhibition in Duke 3D. You need 400 more. Yeah, and you've got about three to four more minutes, so really get your donations in right now if you want to see that happen. Although this run is glitchy enough already. <laughs> oh, he's not showing half the glitches. You ain't seen nothing no. yet. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a couple of tricks I've deemed not marathon safe, but you can clip through a couple of motors. Like you can pretty much skip that last um, like train ride I had there. You can skip it, but you pretty much die on like 70 to 80 percent of the time. Also, this force field can randomly kill you. That's why I'm going to make a quick save. There we go. <laughs> Got that shown off. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I have no idea why it sometimes kills you. Like even if you don't touch your angle and just repeat the same input from a quick save, you sometimes survive and sometimes you don't. No idea. It's just you can probably just sees you in the wall and kills you. There's a hundred dollars from Silos nine one one. Hey Dave, good luck with the run. I'm sure you'll do excellent as usual. Well, shout out to Silos nine one one. He's one of the more active runners of this game. Goes found a couple of really good tricks and has been helping me with routing and stuff. And that's the second episode done. Also, shout out to Oasis who helped me pretty much route and plan out a lot of this game a couple of years back. And even more recently. Like this game is still, surprisingly still undergoing pretty active development despite having a 10 year tradition of speedrunning. Like this clip was found about a week ago. And despite all the efforts, <laughs> despite all the efforts we put into this game, nobody has really worked in the first episode, which is more like an add-on. It was released in the 1.4 Atomic Edition of the game. And outside of the ILs, Benito did for FDA, pretty much nobody's worked on it. We've started routing it pretty recently, but it's entirely not consistent yet, which is why I didn't offer a different donation incentive for this year. Maybe when I get back. Also, if we don't clip the walls, we can actually just fire rockets through walls to trigger explosions. Oh, come on. Do one of these people die. Give him a break. <laughs> okay, so I bet I'm going to die in a second. I've had trouble with this trick in practice. No, okay. Nice. So nice. basically, um, you can clip on any wall, even underwater, like if there's a small ledge. If you, if you can see right there, there's a small ledge in front of the door I opened. But um, due to the way the underwater physics work, uh, you don't actually have enough momentum to get out on the other side of the door alive, so you usually get squished. So how do we remedy that? Well, we just blow ourselves up with a rocket in the face. 
gives a bit of pushback. Duke doesn't care. Critics don't care. Well, it seems highly appropriate that I say we have $10 from Beano Lee, who says, love the Duke destruction. Also, for some reason, I, I can't tell why. I've, like, I've, I've started blowing myself up at the end of this level. It's entirely not necessary, because I have a full med kit to heal myself. But every time I tried skipping that, I messed up the start of this level, so I've just kept it in. Just muscle memory. <laughs> So yeah, so we are on the subway now, and uh, as you can see in a second here, uh, Duke Nukem on steroids can actually outrun subway. So if you want to solve public transportation, steroids for everyone. <laughs> that easy. Okay, um, one more donation, I guess. We have $30 from Nasukin. How can you consider skipping map 32 of Plutonia? It's the game's most iconic map. Please don't let it slip. Oh, God. What's going on? What the hell? Stop blowing up. Yeah. Okay. $5 from Major Foley, who says, those map physics on Duke Nukem. So map physics is Duke physics. So we're getting pretty close to the end of the level, uh, of this run. There's two levels left. Oh, come on. In this one, you can just throw a pipe bomb through a conveniently sized hole in the wall, get straight to the exit. And now we, now we are facing off against the final boss, if you want to call him a boss. You can just rave around. Pretty easy fight. Can you show the cutscene? Yeah. Also, yeah. 20 old. <laughs> And time. Right. Well, yeah, that, that's All a decent right. time. <laughs> also, the next captain might not be appropriate for this time of the day. Oh, oh, okay, it's already past 10 p.m. It's okay. Okay, so I guess it's time for a refresh on the glitch exhibition. All right, so the total was the total was fourteen forty-two the last time I got it to load. Well, that's good enough for me. That's close <laughs> enough. Like you've been donating so hard and watching our marathon so hard, the trackers actually having troubles. Okay, yeah, I'll I'll just go we'll ahead. We'll assume that the last fifty-eight dollars is on its way. Okay. Oh. Uh, no, I just have to remember where I want to start. Okay. Yeah, piece of cake. Nobody steals our chicks. And live. So on this level, um, you basically start out on a small shuttle, and you dock onto the next uh, space station. And during practice, something pretty strange happened to me, and I'm going to show that off to you. If you kick this force field, yeah. <laughs> so we're pretty much stuck in here for now. <laughs> Except your mighty foot is strong enough to disable this force field as well. So you can <laughs> <get back there. laughs> and you can actually disable this, go out in space oh. and get crushed. <laughs> so, um, uh, if you remember, this was the boss level of the second episode. And if you don't actually feel like um, fighting a boss, there's uh, an alternative you can because um, this level has um, a secret uh, exit level button that's normally uh, restricted to deathmatch access. And uh, I've practiced this, but the angle is pretty precise. Uh, come on. Okay, I'm just going to cheat for a moment. Uh, I'll show that you can actually hit this button from the outside. I just have to get the angle right. Um, Like that. So basically, if you do this right, you can open the door from the outside and just use the nuke button 
So the way the level transition in this game works is pretty interesting. Like if you finish a level using a level exit trigger, you uh, get moved on to the next level in a, uh, the progression, and I'm just going to put on some, oh, come on. God. Oh god, I can't type today. Come on. What the hell? Okay, why is my speed working? Anyway, uh, clipping should be off. I just have to try not to. There's, okay, I'll just turn off all the enemies. That should work as well. So in any case, um, to get back to this, so you get put on the, into to the next level in the level transition, which is level 10 of this episode, which is the first secret level. At the end of which you have a secret level exit trigger, which that's an internal flag marking the next level you play as a secret level. And it puts you back into where the secret level is normally supposed to lead you to. So <laughs> <laughs> it was a glitch fest. Well, I, I'm not actually, I hope this is still stored properly. So we'll just see what happens. I'll try not to run out into space this time. So if it's still working right, this should now like trace back to the level you came from because you just finished the secret level and increment your level counter by one. So we should end up in level 11 of episode two, which is the second secret level. So if we exit this one, this is another secret exit level trigger. So we again go to where we're supposed to be, but now have the secret level flag set again, which is the boss level again. So what happens if we exit this level again? Well, we go on to level 12 of the um, episode, which doesn't actually exist. What does the game do? Well, you go to, it's the obvious solution to end up in level one of episode three. But if you look at on the map screen, you can actually see on the bottom left, we are still part of uh, the Lunar Apocalypse episode, which is episode two. So, so naturally, what would you expect to happen if you finish this level? Well, probably advance by another one and go to level two of episode three. Oh god, we are not actually invincible. <laughs> so, no, what, what happens instead? Well, it's clearly the only sensible way the engine can make um, sense of this. Like this. We'll wait for a second. Nobody. Level one of episode two. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> it's the natural progression. <laughs> hey, let me quickly put on clipping again. Are you gonna do the room? Yeah, um, on this level, for some reason, if you clip outside and get squished, you get teleported to the subway train. <laughs> it just happens like that. And there's something pretty interesting about this game and the way uh, rotating objects behave. Like, um, because this is an early 90s game, um, the processing power wasn't actually enough to check like um, like cl make uh, collision detection on pretty much anything that's not like a sprite or anything that's a movable object. So basically the game doesn't actually check if uh, things that rotate uh, can fit where they can fit because uh, level geometry doesn't actually have collision detection as it does. Which normally isn't a problem because, well, you just have to design your level so everything fits. And if, as you can see, the dump stuff can pretty much exist in all its reasonable states. But if you get on top of a rotating object, crouch and activate it, it starts turning in the wrong direction for some reason. Which can pretty much, you can get them to intersect with anything you want. <laughs> and as you can see, um, this is confusing the game quite a bit. Oh, come on, stop falling off. So this is, like, the, the game, action, a, game engine actually doesn't care if things intersect strangely. But as you can see, like, the visuals are pretty broken. <laughs> And as you can see, all the collision detection doesn't really work all that well. So unfortunately, this trick isn't actually useful anywhere. But there's an extension to it. But for some reason, this level does something even stranger when, when you uh, execute that split. And well, you can see this is just a pretty basic, even if, well, by 1993 standards, probably a well-built uh, conference room in a 3D game. But if you Clip on the store, then, well, uh, <laughs> yeah. Twist, twist in on itself. It pretty much slips in on itself, and you can even see on, on the map. 
That's where your government dollars go to. <laughs> oh, in case you can also clip back out. And be sort Good of luck getting here. back in. Oh, you can actually get back in. Just pop in here. It's, uh, as you can tell, pretty much like the collision detection, you, you clip from this side and actually walk in from this side. So, yeah, this is probably one of the strangest uh, clipping bugs I've ever witnessed in a game because the actual level geometry collapses on itself. When it's, there's, there's nothing in the code that should actually allow like vectors to change like that. It just happens. But at least the game engine doesn't crash. I, I bet a modern Call of Duty game wouldn't handle this at all. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Um, thanks for watching, and then have fun with Quake coming up next. <laughs>
I also wanted to give a, a, a special mention of, of thanks to the to Twitch themselves because they sent uh, several dozen pizzas here to the hotel a little bit ago. I think everyone on, on site appreciates that. Unfortunately, we can't send pizza over the internet. Uh oh. It's gonna like. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Oh, check it, check this out, check this out. I just want to uh, <laughs> uh, give a couple of shout. Is my mic on? It's on. I guess I um, Like first and foremost, I would like to give a huge thanks to uh, Tommy Refinis of Team Yeet. Um, he was kind enough to uh, sponsor my flight ticket here to uh, DC. So if it weren't for him, and mainly him and my stream viewers, I wouldn't be here doing this one. That's great. And um, shout out to Radix as well. No Woohoo, that's me. For being here. Uh, so yeah, I guess, um, guess I'm good to go. So you could give me a countdown and I'll start. How would you have? Oh, okay. Okay. Three, two, one, go. All right, so this is quick. So on this very first, okay, I'll do episode four first because I'm used to doing it since it's the hardest one in the game. Oh, I got the first try, sweet. That's, a, that's definitely more difficult than it seems, that curve. And it skips like half of the level. Very cool. Good start. It's coming up with E4 and 2. Now, the reason why I started with episode 4 is because when doing signal segment runs, this is by far the hardest episode in the game. Also, you might have noticed that I sort of disable a couple of like the heads of display. Like, it, the screen doesn't flash red when I take damage. So I disabled that because it's really annoying. Right. So, print precise jump. Oh shit, I fell down. Why do I go now? <laughs> solid start. Real solid start. Where do you even go? Uh, shit. I guess I'm getting the key. I didn't want. I didn't want it, to get the key. It teleports you back to the beginning. Okay. Whatever. Improv. You know what? 
Let's just restart. Really. I got plenty of time. <laughs> I just want to do this level normally. Uh, so you're not you're supposed to skip this level. I got sort of sidetracked by falling down in a place I've pretty much never visited before. Okay. So basically. So yeah, that skips the silver key. And this jump right here. Yeah, that's nice. It skips a lot of level as well. Gonna go with the silver key, explosives. Now Quake has some really interesting mechanics, new mechanics. Oh shit. That was a very good boost. But mainly uh, so like damage. Oh good job. Uh, like you get boosted forwards when you take damage. So by doing like explosive boosts or getting hit by enemies, that boosts you forwards, give you forwards more. Oh shit. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not the most solid level, but what gives? Hard boost is sort of difficult. But yeah, um, the reason why I jump around everywhere is because that um, makes me, basically makes me go faster. Whenever I strafe in mid-air, I gain speed. Still not a boost, done a nade, grab the silver key, boost up your teleporter, go to the end. Easy low, easy low. Yeah, we call the constant jumping around bunny hopping. Yeah, this is bunny hopping. It took several years of running Quake for it to uh, evolve into what you see. A sort of interesting technique with bunny hopping <laughs> uh, is that every time you land, when you like when you bunny hop, you lose a tiny bit of speed. But by holding forwards, just as you land, you make the jump, you don't lose as much speed. It's got a record launcher. Okay, so I pretty much got most of the hard levels out of the way now. Like the first three levels in the run are the most difficult, I would say. Definitely. That's why I started with episode 4. Although it doesn't really matter with this event, since this is live. Right, so E4 M7, this is E4 M7. There's a couple of really cool things. There we go. That's good. Oh shit. sort of dark. <laughs> this game is pretty dark. You can make it brighter, but... Well, it's worth noting that you're not running the original Stockquake software. Oh, yeah. This is an uh, updated software, but we, we didn't choose to make it any brighter, and we changed it. So I'm done with episode four, heading to episode three. E4 and one, sort of straightforward. That's a like, large skip right here. We basically, the slopes can either boost you upwards or downwards, depending on uh, if you, like, how you jump on it. So basically, I've used the slope there, gave me additional height, which may be uh, able to do that large shortcut. And on this level, e and 2 I'm gonna make a large skip as well. Oh, that was bad. I have to restart the level, unfortunately. There we go. I jump over an invisible trigger. Now the trigger will make the silver key go down to this, like, beneath the ground. Okay, that was good luck. And it would take me an additional, like, 30 to 40 seconds to get it if I wouldn't do the trigger skip. So e e frame 3, pretty straightforward level. You just boost up to silver key immediately. Go down here. Now this is a lethal part of the game. Oh, good position. Good order position. Get that. I miss it. Oh. That was, that was good luck. That could have been way worse. Great. All right, D3 and four. Nice water boost. What launcher boost up here? Let's 
So basically, the gameplay is sort of straightforward once you know how the game works. You air straight to go faster, and use explosives to go faster. 29 is a good time, that level. Definitely a good time. Now, the wind tunnel has an interesting skip. A large skip as well. It goes up here, and up here. You hit an uh, invisible trigger that makes that wind tunnel open earlier than we're supposed to. So yeah, it's been a uh, really solid episode 3 so far. We have $50 from Pink Aporium. Took the week off work to watch every waking hour. Can't wait to see Quake and hopefully Doom 2. Hit from 6, really straightforward level. It has a boost up to the gold key right here. Oh, I didn't make it. Oh, it got devastated. <laughs> it's fortunate. But the thing about Quake, though, I do it around, this is on easy, but enemies deal the same amount of damage on um, each difficulty. The difference between the difficulty is that uh, enemies are just, like there are main, two main difficulties that people run in this game. There, there's easy and nightmare. Uh, easy um, is the most competitive category for full game runs and single segments because Nightmares is just uh, so luck based and difficult with uh, the amount of enemies and their aggressiveness that it's pretty hard to deal with them. So E1 and 1, it's a classic level. Oh, that was a very nice button sequence. Nice jump. It's a really strong finish. Yes. You want him to. It's a really straightforward level as well. Just bunny hopping. Get silver key. I want this armor because it's gonna help in E1 and 5. He loves me now. Get away. We have $50 from Naropin who says. No one can take for things serious when true thing come to be real faith. Cancer is back. Right, E1 and 3, a classic gold key boost. Got it. Got a boost right there. Oof, a bit too high, but got him. So this is a short break. You don't get a whole lot of those in this game. It's like a 15 second break. We have $50 from Anonymous Toner who says lost a good friend at too young of an age. Kill that cancer. Is that better? Okay. Okay, so E1 and 4. I'm gonna attempt a really difficult boost here. I might mess this up. I was too early. I'm gonna attempt it again. And if I mess it up, I'm just going to do the regular speedrun route for this. Ah, oh, yeah, just going to do a regular route. It's fortunate. But basically, what that would do is that you would skip the silver key that I just got by making like this giant boost. It's all right. I haven't gone this way in a while. <laughs> E1 and 5. This is the reason why I got the armor back in E1 and 2. Because of this upcoming boost right here, the double boost off the Fien and then the rocket boost up here. If I wouldn't have had armor, I wouldn't be able to do that in that quick fashion. E1 and 6 has a really just easy jump straight to gold key. And then you're basically done with the level. Bad ogre. That's okay. That's it. E1 and 7. First boss. Perfect. And he's done. Now on easy difficulty, you only have to hit him once on easy difficulty. 12.6 is really good. Good. So it's just episode 2 left, man. This game's so fast. It's too fast. Episode 2.
Eight to M one, shortest level in the game. The speed run. There you go. E2 and 2. Now, this is a sort of interesting level. Uh, I like this level. Okay, I'm waiting for that guy because he can really screw you over badly. I like this level because it's sort of um, it's a couple of intense parts. Oh, grab the card, stun the ogre. Nice. Jen was behaving. So basically, the card damage deals quadruple damage. So it just wrecks these enemies. Okay, E2 and this is E2 and three. Yeah. Simple bunny up sequence right here. It's able to skip the bridge. And you a boost straight up to the end of the level. Got to kill this guy to open up the door. Stun the ogre. He's on one. That was good. Uh, e two and four. Now this is a quite. I would say this is a difficult level. It's sort of easy to mess this level up. It has a couple of critical parts. Um, sort of starts out quite relaxed, but it gets intense. Gotta stun that guy. Get the rock launcher. Disappear. Keep on momentum. This boost. Ah, damn. It's fine though. Can grab his HP. Oh shit. I have to restock level. <laughs> I'm gonna have had like in a farm uh health finish level. We have ten dollars from Panic Eleven who says Quake is one of my favorite games and AGDQ is awesome. Keep up the good work. Stun that guy. That's better. Oh, one mouse freaked out. There we go, I made it. That should be fine. I'm just gonna make a quick serve here just in case I messed this up. I don't really feel like we're playing low. Yeah. It's sort of a uh, precise boost. That guy. Now E1 and 5, no, E2 and 5, next level is really cool if I can actually pull this off. Mm. Too bad. Too bad. This start is difficult, but it's really cool looking. There we go. Alright, I need this red armor. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now, this is a large skip. Basically, the, the, you're supposed to go down an elevator, ride an elevator for like 20 seconds, but by getting stuck, you can get out earlier. Oh. That's not good. Get out of my way. I'm just gonna make a save here just in case. Uh, that's a bad. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. There we go. We have $100 from Atrophied for Mr. Monopoly's Halo 2 run and shout out to. Goat rope on his Halo CE Legendary. All right, got anything to say? About Just Quake? Yeah, in general. Well, that uh, trick you just showed off in E2 and 5 uh, was actually discovered in a contest originally held by John Romero in 1997. And in fact, the, the name of our uh, event here, Awesome Games Done Quick, is uh, sort of in honor of the original Quake Run release called Quake Done Quick back in 1997. That's where the uh, Done Quick came from. I'm almost dead. What? <laughs> uh, Try what not to squish yourself. <laughs> what a waste of time. Uh, so basically what this level is, uh, I hit this elevator trigger. It triggers the elevator going down and I, I have to wait for like 50 seconds for the sequence to finish. So while that is finishing, I grab HP, I grab armor, and hopefully avoid dying this time. That would be great. So for anyone interested in Quake, the Quake section of Speed Demos Archive has thousands of demos 
uh, lots of individual level speed runs, highly optimized, 100% kills, easy and nightmare. There's lots of them. Including recently submitted demos by Mr. Colt Kidner. We have $50 from Alexander Hofer, who says the FPS block has been really good so far. Keep up the good work. Also, this goes towards Doom 2. So I'm hitting his trigger as soon as possible. So there's going to be a war. I need to kill the war as soon as possible because it makes me make this platform go down. Boost up. Oh, nice boost. So that's like the last actual level. Now, there's still one more actual level. Yeah, but <laughs> you know, no actual enemies in life that good. So this is the final level of game and the PSP. So the run is basically over at this point. I would say. I mean, I could. You can still die, but it's not very likely. So you jump over here. Who starts the secret? And then you wait. So basically, the only possible way of killing Shub Nigarev in this version is to telefrag him or her. It's just waiting for this sort of thing to go inside of him and time. Mm. I had <laughs> a couple of, I mean, that was upper, I didn't know where I was going to E4 and 2. That was sort of weird, but that was cool. It was fun. That uh, was fun. Well, here is uh, So, yeah, that's it, basically. Uh, <laughs> That's quick. All right, we're on commercial. <laughs> they needed to know your runner's choice, I think, over there. Cool, okay. They needed to know your choice for donation while things were happening. Uh, towards, is Bucky hard like, mode Tell met? them over there. Is it met yet? Put it, Bucky hard mode. Put it uh, towards that if it isn't. It has been met actually. It's, okay. it's met? Yes. Uh, put it towards uh, legendary mode in Halo 2. All right, coming up, we have Final Dome, the Plutonia Experiment by Dime. And there is, is a donation incentive for that game. To see the secret map, go to it, which is only at 1343 out of 2000. After that, we have Doom versus Doom 2. We don't know which game will be played yet. It's a bid war. Last I checked, Doom was winning. Oh, now Doom 2 is winning. Currently, Doom 2 is ahead by $132. Doom 2 is, ahead, is winning the bid war. Now, next up is Final, uh, final Doom. Next up is Final Doom, the Plutonia Experiment. <laughs> we 
We also have a donation incentive to play Halo 2 on legendary difficulty, which is at 2155 out of 3000. That's coming up in just a few hours. It was small for quick. Does Dime have one? Yeah, he's got one. Yeah. Oh, oh, we're back for commercial? Okay. All right, so um, I got a little bit of a prize here to show off. Um, for some scale, I'm 6'2". This thing is huge. Uh, this is generously donated by Blizzard. This way? All right. This thing is huge. It's about 25 pounds. It's donated by Blizzard. This is a grand prize for the PC, huge PC block coming up on Thursday. We're, you know we've got a bit of a smaller PC block here, and Dime's a StarCraft guy, so we were bringing this out here so you guys can get a look at it. We'll, having it. we'll have it out a little bit more on Thursday, but this is a really big prize. It's a $50 buy-in to get entered for it. You can enter up to three times for a total of $150 during the entire PC block on Thursday to Friday morning. And uh, this thing's valued about a thousand dollars donated by Blizzard so huge thanks to them We've got a few other things we wanted to show somebody hold on to this because we've been admittedly a little bit bad about showing the prizes so far so we've got UA could you pass me the uh, Majora's Mask thing too this is our actual grand prize well one of them got this limited edition Majora's Mask collector's edition box. It's got all sorts of crazy stuff in here, of course, including a cartridge. But with everything that's in here, you're probably a little bit more interested than everything other than the cartridge. Do we have anything else over there? Oh, yeah. So this is not what it appears to be, just a normal NES, because if I turn it around here, we've got all these crazy ports carved in at the back. And this is a NES PC, which can function both to run normal NES games while running the PC that's inside. So it's, who provided this? I forget, actually. Mike, who provided the next game? Um, a, a marathon attendee named Buddy. Um, he's actually right there if you want to get him on camera. Yeah, so he's right here. Uh, provided this for the marathon. It's really cool. He can probably give more details than I can. Yeah, uh, you covered it pretty well. It's just an NES show with a computer inside. Um, it's a pretty good system. Uh, it'll play most of your modern games pretty well. Uh, a lot of these I know are real low power, but uh, I was able to play several modern games with this. And as mentioned, it still plays regular NES games as well. Um, so hook it up and have a good time. Uh, it's the same buy-in as all the other grand prizes, so good luck. So this gigantic thing is just for the PC Block on Thursday or Friday, but since it's the same price point as the other grand prizes, you get entered in both of those drawings at the same time, and of course, you can donate for those whenever you want. So I think Dime is getting ready to go here. Do you have one? So I'm going to unhook myself here. It's all of StarCraft ever. And it's like 18 inches high. It's got like a 12 by 14 inch base. It's Tychus Finley holding it in his Space Marine outfit, standing on top of a dead hydralisk. There's like bullet casings everywhere. It's insane detail. Um, there were pictures of it that were posted online. If you look up uh, Tychus Finley sideshow statue, you can see pretty good pictures box. of it. Um, I don't know if you have pictures of the statue on the tracker or what, but it was all over Reddit when I posted it. It's uh, it's pretty awesome. And now that I'm mentioning it, probably can somebody can probably dig up a link to throw in chat. Check check. Uh, 
What's up? Hi, I'm Pavera. <laughs> I'm Pavera. I'm here to say things. <laughs> He might have it. We have $50 from Kevlar Man who says it's really nice to finally see the game that started it all for SDA run live. Sadly, there are no donation incentives for it. So I'll put this towards making Cosmo play with the file name Mappa. $100 from Scuff. This donation is for Doom. Vortail is a great friend of mine. My mom died of brain cancer this December. Vortail was a constant support, support and a wonderful friend off. throughout. I wish him the best. Race out your heart, man. Race your heart out. Looks fun, man. Could be. Maybe it's not close enough to you. Fifty dollars from Anonymous, who says Doom Two and Quake were the games of my childhood. Great to see them run live. Thanks to everyone here at AGDQ for making my first marathon really enjoyable. Are you dying? <laughs> $50 from Luke Thornton. Lost my grandmother to lung cancer a couple years ago. This I've been watching the stream for a couple sure. of years now, and you guys never fail to entertain. Why is there no love for Gray Fox yeah. for the MGR skin? Keep up the great work, fellas. You'll hit 500K in no time. Okay, testing. Oh, it's a thing. I thought you were looking at me. $50 from Anonymous, who says, shout out to Cool Kid and Quake Speedrun for Cancer. Thanks for the 411 on the ATDQ Saturday, design director, Nat GOTV. $50 from Anime Cat Girl Meow. Donating to a good cause, let's see that final secret level in Final Doom. <laughs> $50 from Dan Bo, to hell with cancer and to hell with brutal doom. $50 from Gary James. This is Kubelwagon. Hey, Dame and Vort Dime and Vortail. Sorry I couldn't be there to whoop your tails, but good luck nonetheless. Rip and tear, tear one for me. P.S. John Romero on Skype for AGDQ 2015. Make it happen. Here, have a plushie. I want to put my arm up and it's in the way. <laughs> that thing. I know, I threw too hard. We have $132 from Nathan McGreal. I've been watching speedruns for a couple months now and they always blow me away. First time seeing it live and I love what you are doing. Putting this towards Doom for being an awesome game. We have $50 from Carl A. Hey, everyone. Longtime watcher and donator here. Dropping Josh to show my support for the FPSs that made gaming and speedrunning the amazing beast it is today. Keep up the good work, and remember, go to it. Hello? Sound? This is four now. $32 from Tyler Erb. Huh? Map 32 Hello? needs to happen. Am I good? If Duke had anything to say about Map 32, it'd be, that's one doomed Space Marine. Everybody keep donating. Nice We're very close to the go to it goal. Please put this towards the Kakobman plushie prize. All the best, Tyler. I thought it was a sad game, bro, because it made you cry. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> It was Tears of Rage. $50 from Yeroen van der Krummenacker. Hey everyone, greetings from Holland. I've been following the marathons for a few years now, but haven't donated before. Doom is pretty much my favorite game ever. I hope the go to it goal is met in time. I'm looking forward to hearing my how my weird Dutch name will be pronounced. Go kick Hansers huge guts. $50 from Trouble T Cat. Big thanks to all the runners and everyone else who makes AGDQ possible. Special thanks to the runners in the FPS block for playing and breaking the games that first made me love gaming 
and for helping to pride cancer. Doom 2 is the best Doom. The Coca, Coca Demon plushie is adorable, and AGDQ is the best event of the year. $50 from Hector XXX in memory of Julian died of a cancer at 34 years old. We miss you. $50 from Blood Shedder. I may run Doom World, but I've never actually played Final Doom. Good luck, Don. It's the most obnoxious weapon, though. So it's the best to test sound with. Yeah, this is against protocol. whenever I'm ready. So uh, just before I get into the run here, I just want to give a quick shout out to Team Liquid and also the Doom World forums. Doom There's been a lot of guys on these forums that have helped me out with these runs over the past while. So we're gonna start in three, two, one, go. So this is Final Doom and it was released in 1996. So most people are kind of unaware of this one. They've played Doom, they've played Doom 2, but uh, Final Doom was a little less popular. And that's probably because Quake came out in the same year. Yeah, um, plus it was super duper hard. That was another thing. Yeah, one of the things you're gonna see in this run is there's gonna be a ton of higher tier monsters. So you're gonna see a lot of chain gunners, a lot of revenants, and... So that was a telefrag right there. So I was hoping for the Revenant to go forward, and he did. He did. So one of the things I should mention right away with this run is there's a ton of RNG. So weapon spread, uh, weapon damage, enemy damage, enemy movement. Pretty much the whole game from start to finish. So you're gonna do SR40 across this gap here? Yeah. And what SR40 is, is the, there's actually two types of speed, um, strafe running. So SR40 is just normal, which you would get in games like Quake and different things like that. And that's where you press uh, forward and one direction. And that's gonna get you 28% extra speed. But there's also a modified version of strafe running called SR50. So SR50 is forward, uh, turn direction, strafe direction, and strafe on. And this is really bad. Yeah. So um, in this map, there's going to be something coming up towards the end here where you're going to see him walk across a gap. And that's essentially... A, I, maybe I should shut up here because he's... Uh, so just going to slow down here a little bit. Oh. This is a very hard game. <laughs> that's just uh, that's one really good example of how much damage chain gunners can do really quickly. Yes, they just chew through health and armor. Not a big fan of chain gunners. No, and there are a lot of chain gunners in Final Doom. Yeah, just wait till you get to the Twilight. There's a fun wall of chain gunners. So um, yeah, towards the end of this map, there is a uh, an invisible bridge which isn't really well marked, so I don't want anyone to be confused when he walks across it. It's, it's a self-referencing sector, and you can do that in Doom. It's pretty cool. No, I, I like thrills. <laughs> so the reason I shot right there is because I was manipulating the Hell Knights. That's going to allow me to get past them. So right here was the invisible bridge that Favera was talking about. And so what I do is I go a few pixels to the right. Sure. Okay, yeah. Um, so that's an SR50 issue. Uh, where's the start menu? Oh. 
This seems like a good time to ask what the runner's choice is for donations. Donations? Uh, just give it to go so to it. Know, um, the bear is a map maker, so he's probably going to spout a bunch of random terms yeah, that so, nobody's um, going to know about. We just need to go to yeah, the sorry, I get technical sometimes mouse settings I think and we need to turn off. Designer's um, perspective and not necessarily a default speedrunner's speed perspective. Nothing. So if I get boring, just yell at me. I'm sorry. Because of Twitch. <laughs> I think Team Liquid had a donation incentive for Plexa with Wind Waker, so do it to that. So we have fifty dollars um, from Matthew Crossley. Amazing work you guys are doing this year. I tuned in last year and I'm pleased to see people kicking cancer's butt once again. No, it's under system sound. It's like $25 so from Brian Peck. And it has to Donation 1 out of 5 for AGDQ. Got to be in the running for Tekka Demon Perler. Put the money towards runner's choice. Up. I think this one. Windows background. $100 from Matthew Schemmer. You guys are total badasses. My dad is a cancer survivor, so as with many others, these events mean a lot to me. I grew up on Doom, so huge props to the runner. I'll donate more if it will make me eligible for a date with John Romero. Uh, I don't think we can make arrangements with that. He's a, we can stick you inside the icon with his head. He's flaky. He's hard to get in contact with. But he's a good guy. Is it better this time? Oh, yeah. We have fifty dollars from cloned pickle. Shout out to Pavera's beard and the ten cent king. Hi, cloned. Apologies for the technical difficulties. We were bitten by sticky keys in Windows. <laughs> no pressure. We have one hundred and thirty-two dollars from Jaxus. Subpixel perf is a lot of beard. Okay, close enough. Where? Where? Dime, this $150 should complete the MAP32 requirement. My $1,500 for offer for MAP32 100% kill so stands. Getting, uh, sounds for this donation doesn't cut into any way. Best of luck to you. I'll be cheering for you. So, uh, is this, what's going on? You were saying you were getting sounds. Yeah. Oh, is SR50 making sounds? Like, Okay. Yeah, that's what I was checking. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to redo map two. So uh, we've transported back to the past, and <laughs> we've started map two over again. Well of Souls. Isn't that a Commander Keen reference? I believe so, yeah. Yes, it is. We have $100 from i4. Final Doom is easily the penultimate first-person shooter, so playing it without dredging through go to it is just wrong. I hope next year you guys incorporate the Brutal Doom mod into the runs. I'd like to see a regular speedrunner tackle that evil doom. No, it was bound to happen. We have $50.20 from the Robot Devil. Hey, AGDQ, glad I get to see this awesome event again. Keep on fighting the good fight. Put this donation towards W Mom as Luca for Chrono Trigger. Shout out to the 502 Smug Pack and never seeing a 113. So the one thing you're gonna see with Doom Monsters is everything does a ton of max damage. So, for example, Revenants can do anywhere between 10 and 80 damage. Uh, Shotgunner can do between three and 45. Um, Hell Knight, 64 to 90. Well, that's max damage, actually. So Final Doom doesn't really have a good story. Uh, supposedly, Doom Guy is the closest marine to Jupiter. And they were trying to close seven portals, but they only closed six. And Doom Guy is supposedly in a different time dimension in the Congo. So I don't even know where the story goes, but in Doom, you shoot and run. Shoot things, monsters appear, and then you kill them. So, um, there's an interesting tidbit of information about this game, that the, uh, the, two, the two designers behind Plutonia, a team of brothers, their names were uh, Milo and Dario Casali, and they both divvied up the levels half and half, 
And uh, one of the designers, Dario, is actually uh, uh, working at Valve right now. And uh, he worked heavily on Half-Life Half -Life 2. So that was the worst luck with that arch file? Yeah, bad RNG. Speaking of Doom, after this run, we have a bid war for which game is run next, Doom versus Doom 2. Doom is currently in the lead with 1165 versus Doom 2 at 1045. We have $50 from John Jog. $50 towards the final Doom secret map, glad to still be up for the ID games. Or is it id games? Id games. $50 from Anonymous who says get the secret map and go Team Liquid. So right there is a small trick that I do. Um, the elevator takes three or four seconds, but um, if I can kind of go to the right of it and then using a certain pixel, you can pull yourself back left. So Caged know, right? is a terrifying map. It's map four of Plutonia, and it's very much like map 26 of Doom 2. So you'll see a lot of the maps um, are quite a bit like Doom 2 maps, or even copied in some cases. Which you'll see that in map 21 Slayer. We have $50 from Desiati. Shout out to Gene Slam, Hidden Squire, Cody Fun 123, and everybody in Eagle Hut Mumble. Doom 2 is going to be so fast, we need to slow down. So, in the single segment run, you don't actually kill those barons, but um, there's about a 90% chance that you'll die if you keep them alive. We have $100 from Tarnsman. Tavera's beard should start speedrunning. Tavera optional. P.S. Brutal Doom sucks. <laughs> <laughs> shoutouts to Tarnsman. And also shoutouts to Constipated Fat Guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So um, I'd like to point out that that map is really, really hard, and Dime just crushed it. So good job, Dime. Yeah. So this game has pretty much no delays. It's just going to be 40 minutes of action. And it's very stressful. So here's your first Spider Mastermind. Spider Mastermind. You might remember him as the, I guess her? The final boss of Doom. Episodes 3 and 4 of the original Doom boss of Spider Mastermind. That was... Yeah. It's a lot easier to kill. We have fifty dollars from Anonymous, who says, "In the past few years, I have lost both of my parents to brain cancer, and I just found out my si my sister was diagnosed as well. I have spent every, every waking hour watching the stream, and will continue to do so." $50 from WikiDoo. Glad to be donated again to this fantastic event. I have a few loved ones who suffer, survive, or die from cancer, and it's time we make a change. Thank you to all the speedrunners for organizing this event each and every year, and happy 20th anniversary to do. So you're going to see a cyber demon in this map. And the next trick you're going to see is called a wall run. And what that does is you can either do it in an east to west direction or a north to south. Now when you go fast enough, the engine counts you twice, so that's why you go twice as fast. So the donation incentive for the go to it secret level has been met. So last map had a mastermind, this map has a cyber. 
Nice, Saeed. That was really good. Got the Cyber one Demon cycle. is the second fastest moving monster in the game, so he can really easily block you in that stage, uh, keep you from hitting that second switch. So this map actually has a pretty major skip in it. Uh, normally you're going to kill the mid side, and a, this door is going to come down. You're going to get a, a Baron. So you're going to have to go around, kill a bunch of stuff, and then you get a key, and then you can get out here. But by doing an SR50, Dime can actually run over the gap and skip about 65% of the level. So this is the first map where you're going to see what's called a glide. And essentially it's a, an engine kind of bug which allows you to slip between two walls that you normally can't. In this case it's called a guided glide and that, what that means is you don't have a perpendicular wall beside you helping you out. So what I'm going to do is uh, once you have the right angle and I move forward, I will move very slightly left. And then the right position is going to be when you see the white pixel, or the very first that section of the white pixel. So that's only going to work with a 32 pixel wide gap, because that is um, the size of the Doom Guy's hitbox. So there's actually another glide on this map, but I'm skipping it because it's not very reliable. It's a north to south glide, and um, pretty much what I would do is I would get into the right spot similar to the last map, and then I would bang my head on the wall until I get through. So it's not reliable. It's, it's rather entertaining to watch on screen when you're doing runs, but it's kind of boring for a marathon. Especially if it doesn't work, and then he's just kind of hitting his wall for, you know, up to probably a minute. So, sorry for blinding you all, but um, the invulnerability kind of sucks in Doom. Yeah, so um, the guys that did realized that day vision actually makes you invincible. So that's why they did this. Yeah. That's it. No other explanation. Nobody proved otherwise, so... Sure. No, I don't. <laughs> Ouch. We have $50 yeah. from Tupelaire. It says, good work, Monopoly, on Tower to Tower. Shoutouts to GoPro for his recent work on Halo. Put this toward Halo 2 Legendary. So uh, we're keeping a tally of the amount of times Dime manages to hit himself in the face with a rocket. And so uh, I will be donating $10 for every time this happens between Doom 1 and Plutonia and Grace. So coming up here is a trigger skip, and uh, I'm going to use a visual cue on the wall, and hopefully that'll skip the Mancubi and the Revenant spawn, which I got it. Nice. Nice. Does that feel random to you, or is it just because of the position and how precise it is? No, it's not random. It's all precise. It has to do with crossing the line depth. So this next map has an interesting skip, and you're going to be using a yellow key post. It's just going to take you straight up. I believe this was the final map in the PlayStation version. Of the final game. Yeah, it was. Cyber and it Demon. had a Cyber Demon in the map. Actually, right here, you're going to see him hopefully uh, make this door cycle. That's unfortunate. If you're fast enough, you can actually get back through that door before it closes. So right here is the second wall run, because otherwise the Baron can teleport in front of you. Nice. That was really good. This is the most infamous yeah. map of this wad. <laughs> so we got 14 arch files here, and we're gonna wipe them up. Why not? I mean, Man, that this map also has very fitting music. For anyone who played the original Doom, this is the uh, the finishing music for Episode Three with the uh, iconic image of a bunny's head on the stake. It's kind of morbid, but it's also kind of fun. We 
the arch yeah. battle, with the arch oh. battle attack, you're gonna see the flames will appear for about three seconds before they like, can actually deal damage to the player. So in that time, he's he's able to get out of the way. Yeah, uh, able to run away from most of these attacks. It gets pretty hairy when you're being chased by 14 arch files. And then when the uh, the attack finally connects, it'll blast you into the air a couple times. Which comes in handy in some tricks, as we will see soon. And yes! He's able to get out. Fortunately, there's a Berserk pack at the end of that map. You don't want to take the right one, because otherwise you're going to go to 1% health. Yes. Because there's four Archfiles trapping you, so it's kind of a jerk move. Alright, so this is a great map. Um, it's going to feature the first rocket jump of the run, which is a lot different from Quake Rocket Jumps. It's more of a boost than anything. Um, he's essentially going to blast himself across the map into the exit room. In, in the Doom Engine, there's no way to gain height other than by walking upstairs. So wow. the only way to do anything with a Rocket Jump is basically by taking a large amount of damage at one point, you right. get a huge speed boost. So we're going to look at the left edge of the exit, and then second visual cue to my left, look at two red pixels, and rock Blast. jumps. Perfect. Yes. Wonderful rocket jumps. Does that count to the tally? Yeah, that was first try rocket jumps too. All right, nice. So we have $100 from Trays. Hi everyone, I wish I was on a holiday to be able to watch everything. So many awesome games, thanks for organizing such a cool event, thanks to all the runners, and thanks to Mr. MV. I hope the French restream will be back soon. We have... What you see there is he's actually shooting into the wall, but in Doom, all monsters are infinitely tall, as well as the new guy. So, damage is only spread in the X and Y directions. It doesn't matter where it hits in the Z direction. So with the splash damage, he's actually able to kill a lot of monsters like that. We got $50 from Word Waster. I just want to thank you all again. I'm from the French community, and I will support you until I have no more money. Don't stop running games like they were ba baby games. So this is going to be an SR50 key grab, so we're going to hit a lined up on the wall, mess it up. That's a really, really difficult key grab. We have $50 from Azalpha. Amazing run so far, thanks to all the runners and people who helped make this one of the best HDQ yet. Good luck and keep the games rolling. And he's gonna be he's gonna be reloading this because this is a pretty pretty major skip to grab this key early. There Perfect. Now the, the hard thing about doing an SR50 at any point is you have to simultaneously press four inputs, and pressing any of them at any different time is going to throw off either your alignment or your position. The other problem is that you can't turn while you're doing an SR50, so you have to line yourself up perfectly. And if you don't, then it's going to fail. It's like pixel perfection. So what you'll see is I'll try an SR50, and if I screw it up, it's because I accidentally pressed left or right before uh, the other three buttons. We have $50 from Eek to Cat, who says, Doom rocks. This game really puts all in. Shout out to Eagle Hat and let's all help prevent cancer. Now here you're going to see, this is going to happen on a couple of maps. You're going to see him just kind of teleport around seemingly at random. And then just you know. There's a lot of 
machine gunners in this map, so if you get stuck in this open area, like, they're just gonna they will tear shoot, him apart through him like nothing. So normally games, you know, try to cut off your angle. This map just puts enough chain gunners that it does it anyhow. <laughs> we have $25 from Connor Roth Rothenberger. Dark Zant here. Good luck on the run, Dime. Hopefully all your practice pays off. And of course, gotta keep donating to a good cause and that awesome Coca Demon. Unfortunately, this is a pretty stressful run, so you can't take it too casually. Fortunately, there's an invulnerability at the end of this map. And a soul sphere to kind of reset where his health is at. $30 from Nasukin, who says, Huzzah for hitting the map 32 incentive requirement. Next year, you should have a bid war for Doom PC versus Doom Super Nintendo. Eh? Yeah. Maybe not. Put this donation towards Renaissance. Okay, so this is, a, this is going to have probably the hardest trick in the entire run. One of them, arguably. Um, it's going to involve an arch file jump, which essentially means the arch file blasts the player into the air. As, as we saw on map 11, when you get hit by an arch file attack, it launches you into the air. And you, I guess what, what I said earlier, I lied. But this is the only way you really can aim height. It was yes. perfect. Wow. wow. That was, oh. that <laughs> fell off the side. I don't think I can get back up. Oh, oh no. Can I do it? Wow. Well, I don't know. I've never seen that happen in my entire life. That's the okay, third time I've heard reload. that phrase tonight. Yeah. Wow. That's <laughs> definitely <laughs> never happened before. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this is a night of firsts, but that was a perfect jump, yeah, was, so yeah. props to that. Yeah. We have $128 from Encryptio. I've watched every AGDQ yeah, since 2011. Glad to donate for the third year in a row. You all rock, feeding cancer with video games. So, so fortunately, there's a, there's, a pretty, there's a pretty safe backup strap for the the arch file sometimes doesn't cooperate, he won't follow you in property, so you gotta go to plan B. Pretty unfortunate the chain gunner actually pushed him off the platform. Hundred dollars from Mike M. Good job on all the runs. Hopefully I can catch some of the runs later on and sleep gets in the way. Put 50 to Sonic 06 and 50 to Shirtless Caleb. And a lot of times if you see him low on health, you, you may find him kind of going into a secret to pick up a soul sphere. And it might be out of the way of the actual room, but things happen. $50 from Steven Santero. Thanks for doing AGDQ and SGDQ every year. These events are always amazing to watch and are one of my favorite causes to donate to each year. Put this toward Halo 2 Legendary. So the Halo 2 Legendary goal is at 2460 out of 3000 at the moment. $50 from Elliot Porterfield. Shout out to the tech team behind the scene. While the speedrunners are the celebrities, the tech team personnel are the heroes. So this map's music uses E1M1, which is pretty much ingrained into everyone's brain. If you played video games. Every, everyone who plays Doom remembers this track. You're also, you're also gonna hear it on map 29. Oh yeah, which is probably like the biggest, most gargantuan map in retail Def Doom. Definitely a Doom map. Yeah, so. I can imagine in like a casual run it gets kind of annoying. But Roman, thoughts? <laughs> 
ago, a while, a while back, if you knew people on SRL, had the, the good idea to do a live race in final year in Plutonia. And uh, Professor Broman had the distinct pleasure of being one of those few people. If, if, you're, if you're picking up this game for the first time, Railcoon as well. If you're picking up this game for the first time and you want to sit down and, and beat it in one playthrough, it, it will probably take you a full day. If you want uh, to beat it in one playthrough, I suggest not playing on Ultra Violence. Yeah. <laughs> We have $25 from Evan Biddle. Great event, great cause. I love Doom, and it's one of my favorite games since childhood. So earlier in this map, you saw another example of the uh, infinitely tall items, where he actually had to destroy those barrels in order to reach the key. Otherwise, if you tried to run down those steps, he would have been stopped. case of a missed switch over there, but yeah, that happens. So that map back there actually has the first time that the suicide exit was discovered by Vincent Catala, and that was done back in 2001. So this is going to have an arch file jump right here, skipping almost the entirety of the map. It's pretty tough because of the angle that you have to... $50 from Anonymous who says, Thanks for doing this, guys. You're all kings among men. Cheers and warm wishes. And just a reminder this is Awesome Games Done Quick 2014, brought to you by the members of Speed Demos Archive, Speed Runs Live. And we are raising money for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. And you're certainly witnessing the frustration of many speedrunners to restart over and over again. Except Dime is probably one of the most patient. Yeah, Dime is very Sorry, we're, very we're witnessing the patience of speedrunners. to get an exit, yes. so long time. All right, here's another glide. And for Doom, so single segment for most people is just, you know, you finish the game in one sitting. For competitive Doom speedrunner, you are required to complete all maps without dying or saving. So you, you can imagine how difficult it was. And just about everything you're seeing in this run was done in his single segment run. To perfection, for the most part. Uh, basically everything first try. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's going to be a couple of duplicate tries in a, in a single segment. Most of these, most of these major skips that he's doing result in damage if he fails it. Rocket, rocket jumps are going to deal a large amount of damage, so if you fail them, you know, you're low on health. Ooh, 
interesting little section here. He can't attack the barons. He has to have the barons attack the barrel spawn so he can go in there and grab that blue key. Yeah. If you fire a shot in that area, it's going to spawn Lots 12 revenants in those little, those little like sewer tunnel type things that you ran through. The trenches. Yeah. So Slayer is going to be a, another one of those maps that you can skip. Uh, almost the entirety of it. And maybe some savvy Doom people might recognize that this is essentially, this is essentially a ripoff of Doom 2's map 11, the Circle of Death. And it's over. And it's <laughs> over. <laughs> there's, there's a cool bear in there, but you really can't do much. You know he's coming. So, if anyone caught the uh, the name of this map as he entered, it's actually called Impossible Mission. He's gonna prove otherwise. See, this is actually the map that I quit Plutonia on because I just agree it's impossible. Can't do it. The large mass of chain gun in this area. Chain gun are the absolute worst enemy. Oh yeah, they're the, they're the devil. So here's some more infinitely tall rocket blasting. All they have to do is have line of sight on you. And they start draining your Oh yeah, they blast you and you're full of holes. And then you're dead. And, the, and this, he's activating a lot of switches in the same way. He lowered that lift and activated a switch that you really can't see. But because everything really doesn't have a Z axis. No, oh, that just, was fantastic. Just activate it. That, okay, so he enters the, uh, the teleporter there and he has to be quick. On the dot. There are, I believe, there's an arch file and I think it's eight or nine barons of hell in that room. All of which, I mean, if they all connected to the shots, it would basically be like overkilling three times yeah. instantly. Oh yeah, that's pretty bad. Tombstone. So we're gonna rock out to some chains here. For those of you that can hear on the screen. Yeah, we've got a little some low. Alice in Chains in <laughs> so unfortunately he missed the uh the key grab there. He's gonna be really quick, otherwise that something happens. like that will happen. There's a lot of opportunities to take some mass You're gonna see a really wide open area with a lot of a lot of annoying type monsters. We have $50 from Driscoland. Simply put, great work as always, and can't wait for Wednesday so I can actually watch live. So for the bidding war of which game to run after this, currently in the lead is Doom with 13.25, Doom 2 trailing in 2012.52. If you want Doom 2, you better get the, those donations in. Get that money. Yeah, when are they cutting that off anyway? Pretty soon. Right, 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 right at the end of this run. Yeah. We're, uh, we're close to the end. This is 20 hours. Yeah. Thirty dollars from Carl L. Thank you for running running one of my favorite games, Dime. That Kaka Demon plushie is really cute. Do one. Also, shout out to TLP. So when people first told me, uh, when I was first running this game, they kind of said I was crazy, and now I'm starting to believe them. <laughs> you don't seem crazy. Not only that, he's proven them even further by trying to do runs of even harder Doom creators. Yeah, so uh, the Doom community is still very, very active, and uh, every year we actually have like an, an award ceremony for the best release of the year. I mean, you can buy Doom on Steam for like 10 bucks and have infinite content on every one of you. And uh, Dime has been running some of that. Stop. $50 from Zach L. Keep up the good work, everyone. Here's to even more lost sleep. This is, this is one of the most difficult maps in the world. It's an extremely long map as far as speed running like this set goes. Most of the maps you notice the problem is 
easily in under a minute and 20 seconds. Yeah, I would say this, this is the longest. This map on a good day is in the low two minute range. $25 from Mike Callahan. Love Doom and love this speed run. Thank you for another great year and keep and great cause. Keep it up, guys. $100 from Anonymous, who says, Awesome Duke 3D and Final Doom runs. Great call. $20 from Anonymous who says, who needs sleep anyway? So coming down those stairs uh, into the exit there, is that bad? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, coming down those stairs into that exit can actually be kind of tough because when you're gliding down stairs like that, you kind of lose control of yourself. So if you don't line that up right, you might lose a second or two going right past the exit. But then you'll notice that at the beginning of this map, you actually just ran straight backwards. There's actually a, a soul, a mega spear right behind it when you started on it. So able to get another reset on his health there. So here's another one of the infamous um, rip-offs of Doom 2 map. It's kind of a combination between everybody's favorite map, the Chasm, and um, the Living End, which is map 29. And of course, the Chasm is the greatest map in all of Doom. $15 from Hamperman who says, Hey Dime, awesome to see you at AGDQ. Good luck on your run, mate. You'll smash it. The Archvile jump is actually a, a pretty minor skip on this level. As you can see, there's a, there's a pathway that you can across there now. But it does take time to raise, so if you be able to get the Archvile to jump right away, it does save him a bit of time. $25, 2 cents from Stephen Jezuski. Shoutouts to Wintergreen and the rest of the 502 crew. So in the last part of this map, there's going to be a cyber demon, and he can... Do that. Unfortunately, he shot before he entered the teleporter. Um, the, the strategy for that part of the map is actually to enter the teleporter and immediately shoot the cyber demon, which has a pretty high chance of causing it to go into a pain state and not shoot him. So this map has a new trick right here, and it's going to be a glide between the red pedestal and the teleporter. And this, this one was discovered by you, right? Yeah, it was yeah. the one trick I did discover. There's also a really, really swanky rocket jump here, which is really crafty. Um, yeah, he's actually going to take up the soul speed here because he's a bit low on power. Yeah, it, might, it, it often takes several tries to want to have high health with this. Yeah, especially in a single segment. Oh yes. my god, oh. first try. from Joshua Likens. Hey, AGDQ, Doom is an awesome series and one of my favorites. Keep up the awesome work and can I get a hua from the guys for our beloved Doom guy? Hua. Did you coordinate that? No, it was more fun. Hua! Space Marine. $20 from Vesuvian. 
You are huge, that means you have huge guts. Doom 2 has way more interesting level design. So many correct statements in there. Here's another map where people who haven't seen Zion run this before are probably going to be really confused. There's a lot of seemingly ridiculous teleporting going on. Oh, but it is all necessary. So the one weird part about this run is the first 25 maps are very dangerous, but the last five are a little bit easier, which is nice in this case, because I'm already stressed out enough as it is. $20 from whatever. In memory of my grandmother who passed away from stomach cancer in 2014. Money to Hell Little 2 Legendary. If this doesn't get met, there's seriously something wrong with all of you. So here's the obligatory sewers map. Oh, for, for everyone in speedrunning that hates water levels, Doom does not have water levels. Just throw them out there. Yeah, there you go. You should pick there's, up Doom. There's no water physics, there's no ice physics. Unless you play, like, Heretics or something. Awesome. This is a different game. So right here is an interesting thing, is you're not supposed to shoot after that Arachnatron, because otherwise you're going to trigger a massive monster spawn later. Um, normally when you're playing this map, there's a big monster spawn in here. But by not shooting, we can completely skip it. And then there's two more trigger spawns that are coming up, or trigger skips. Roman's childhood just died. Just died in front of his eyes. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> this Doom is full of wonderful little level design tricks that you would never find except by complete accident. <laughs> We have $20 from Bukhari. Cancer is currently claiming my cousin. Just wanted to say thanks for everyone for coming to make AGDQ 2014. Let's raise more money than last year. Best of luck to runners, plus Doom is the best game ever made. So a lot of people that you talk to that have played Final Doom, this is actually their favorite map out of any Dooms. And Odyssey of Noises is basically downtown 2.0. It's really...